From present, I now call the 2021 Annual Town Meeting of Brookfield, Massachusetts to order. The first order of business that I would like to bring up is, uh, or the first item, I uh, just want to talk a little bit about rules. I think most of you are aware, and I can see most of the masks are there, but uh, the school does require us to wear masks and to have appropriate distancing. If you're not uh, family members, then you need to be three feet apart or at least sit and have a seat between you. Uh, we have non-maskers sitting over there. If you have some medical conditions where you can't, you can sit over there. Um, and so I just want to make sure that everybody's familiar with the, familiar with the rules. Um, okay, I would like to ask uh, veteran uh, Beth Coughlin to lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I need to announce to get us going that there has been a proper uh, return of the constable uh, pursuant to the to pursuant to the within warrant. I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Brookfield by posting attested copies of the same at the U.S. Post Office on the May 26, 2021, uh, at the Brookfield Town Hall on the same day, at least 10 days uh, before the date of the meeting as within directed signed Richard LaPierre. So this is a formal and official uh, meeting. The next thing I would like to do is uh, just uh, by unanimous consent, we have some uh, folks that are here that are non-voters uh, of Brookfield that uh, are likely to need to speak or perhaps may, and I would just like to dispense uh, with this matter uh, as soon as possible. So uh, by unanimous consent, that means everybody just has to be quiet. Uh, I'd like to uh, allow Tantasqua Associate Superintendent Deb Boyd, uh, Police Chief Michael Blanchard, Town Accountant Lori Barkus, Executive Assistant Karen Trainer, Library Director Brenda Metterville, Highway Superintendent Ryan Pontriand, Water Superintendent Brian Clark to speak at this meeting, even though they are not voters of the town of Brookfield. Is there any objection? Hearing no objection, they, not, they are now allowed to speak uh, at our town meeting. The next thing I would like to do is just run through the rules for tonight's meeting. Uh, you can all look on the second page uh, of your warrant book. It's this orange thing. Uh, and if you turn to the second page, uh, my biggest, uh, so starting at item number 11, meeting efficiency, uh, every attempt we made to move this meeting along in a manner that allows us to address all the budget warrant articles and issues at hand, and I would absolutely love to get this all done tonight. The plan is to get through the entire meeting in one night, so a timely efficient meeting is a must. So we have some limits on debate. Under the moderator's power to regulate the meeting proceedings, the following limitations will be observed. The speaker making the initial presentation of an article that is a motion or a budget line item that is seeking to be amended for consideration will be offered five minutes, uh, and I do have a timer, five minutes uh, to provide the details of the article. Comments and questions from voters will be limited to no more than two minutes. No one will be re recognized to speak a second time on any issue until everyone else wishing to speak has had their opportunity to talk. Rude and disrespectful speech will not be tolerated. Uh, and by the way, the constables are here uh, and they would be more than willing at my request to remove someone if they don't want to be respectful. Uh, please remember that all questions and responses should be directed through me, the moderator, so please address me as Mr. Moderator. Uh, you might be thinking some other things, but please address me as Mr. Moderator. I do want to make a couple of comments about the time limits. They are overall time limits. So if you come to a microphone and you uh, speak for one minute and then you ask a question of the advisory committee or a member of the select board, uh, and they take a minute, that's two minutes, your time is up. 
So it's a total time limit. It's a total time limit. Everybody understand that. Uh, the previous question. In the past, uh, the previous question, the motion for the previous question is actually a motion to close debate. Most of us, I think, are aware. Uh, there has been a rule in past moderators, by past moderators, that if the motion to move the previous question is made uh, at the microphone, anyone standing in line to speak uh, will be allowed to speak. I will not be applying that rule. If someone gets to the microphone and makes a motion to end debate and the motion carries, we will end debate and I don't, it doesn't matter who's standing in line. We're going we're gonna to vote on the question. Uh, I do want to point out to you that there are actually two microphones. There's only one up there in the, for, the, for the troublemakers up back there. Uh, but I have labeled uh, one of them uh, opposing uh, and supporting. Uh, and that is to say, if you're opposed to a particular motion that's on the floor, please go to this microphone. If you're in support of a motion, please come to this microphone. I am going to do my level best to alternate between the, the supporting and the opposing um, uh, debaters. I want to point out that we are here to make decisions about the town of Brookfield. Decisions are made by making motions, debating, and voting. No one should speak unless they are engaged in one of these, these two things, either making a motion or debating. You should look to address the town meeting either in support or opposition to a motion. You can certainly ask questions during debate, but please keep questions and debate focused on the motion at hand. The idea is we just want to address the motion uh, and that's it. If someone has stolen your thunder, if you will, and made a point uh, that you wanted to make, please refrain from coming and repeating the same point. If a point has been made, I may ask you to either bring a new point or to stop. If you think I'm going some, if you think I'm doing something wrong or something is going wrong, there is a motion called point of order. Uh, and so if you just stand up and raise a point of order, I will recognize that, ask you to come to a microphone and state what the problem is. That's usually I can't hear somebody speaking, it's too, not bright enough, uh, those sorts of things, or perhaps maybe I've made a procedural error. Please, if I've made a procedural error, bring my attention to it. Uh, let's see. Finally, in the past, uh, when we've come across a, uh, an, an article where no motion is made, we have used the so-called motion to pass over. There is no such motion. Furthermore, there is no reason for a town meeting to take any action where there is no motion. Therefore, if you have a warrant article, and this is generally going to be to people up here, but it may apply uh, to you down there. In fact, during the budget, it likely will. Um, if you have, if there, let's see, where was I? Um, so furthermore, if there is no motion at a town meeting to any action where there is no motion, therefore, if you have a warrant article uh, that you've decided to withdraw or have no motion, just let me know that there's no motion to say no motion. And that's, again, going to apply generally to the selectmen and the advisory committee. <coughs> And all I'm going to do is just move to the next article. Uh, just a few more comments and we'll get, we'll get underway. Uh, I am not going to be reading the, the, the articles. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is on the budget. So actually, I think we're in a spot where um, I'm looking for the uh, uh, article number one. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to accept the annual report of the town officials as printed. Is there a second to the motion? Good. There's a second. Is there any discussion on the is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Point the of ayes order. have it. Point of uh, order. I should say yes, point of order, good. You guys have been raising your cards. Uh, what I'd like to try and do is do these by voice vote. I kind of talked to the, the, the advisory committee and the selectmen this morning and we kind of felt that let's, let's give it a whirl. If there's any question whatsoever uh, about, about a vote that's taken, um, you know, seven members stand up and even if you just, even if one member stands up, I'll count. 
Okay, so I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Um, so I'm going to do try and do things by by voice vote. Uh, if it's necessary, we'll use cards. Yes. If we're all wearing masks, how can people be heard for a voice vote? The question is, if we're all wearing masks, how can you be heard? Uh, well, I'm the one that has to hear it. So if I can make a determination, I'm going to make a determination like the one that we just had. It, sometimes it's pretty simple. Other times it's not. And when it's not, I will, uh, I will count or ask you to raise your cards. All right. Uh, okay. Article number two. Mr. Moderator. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $9,062,582 to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year as shown in the fiscal year 2022 budget advisory committee recommendations as contained in the annotated warrant. Uh, could we please silence our phones? I just heard one go off. Could we please check the phones to make sure that they are appropriately on silent? Uh, there has been a motion made. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. There's a second. Uh, so the motion that has been made is uh, to, to see if the town will vote to raise appropriate $9,062,582 to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year as shown in the fiscal year 22 budget advisory committee recommendations uh, as contained in the annotated budget. Uh, and of course that's at the back end for those of you who are not aware of uh, your warrant booklet. So I do want to, there's one other piece of instruction, I am going to handle the budget a slight bit differently uh, than we've done in the past. In the past, uh, we have gone through and read through all the items in the budget uh, and asked if anybody had a question or a hold, uh, and then once we were done, we'd take a motion, we'd take a vote on all those that weren't put on hold and then come back and revisit the holds. Uh, I am not going to do that. I am just going to go through the budget line by line. If you have a desire to change a number that's in a particular line, uh, then please come forward and make a motion uh, to that effect. Uh, I'm more than happy to take questions as long as they are leading toward an idea of, depending on the answer, I may make a motion to amend a particular line item. I don't want to discourage you from asking questions, but we have a lot of business to do tonight, and the less time that we spend on, on asking questions, uh, without a motion that's on the floor, uh, the better off we're all going to be. Uh, so I just want to give you an example. So I'm going to say uh, line item number one, moderator salary, $50. And someone's going to come up and say, oh my gosh, that poor guy is only getting 50 bucks. I want to move to amend that by deleting 50 bucks and sticking in a million bucks. And I'll say, is there a second to that motion? And, the per and someone's going to second the motion because they feel bad for me. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to say, is there any debate on the motion? Uh, and then there's going to be some debate. There's going to be one vote in favor, and everybody else is going to say, no way, Jack. Okay? That's the way this thing is going to go. Uh, so, um, at this point, I would like to uh, recognize uh, uh, the advisory board chairman. He's going to make some comments uh, with regard to the budget. Uh, and then I'm going to recognize the chairman of the board of selectmen, Ben Poplin, uh, to make a statement about the budget as well. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'd just like to uh, quickly summarize the budget. I'm not going to try and throw too many numbers at you because there are a whole bunch written down in the book. And believe me, I know the numbers. Anyway, it's a uh, we presented a budget to you. Our under our expectation is that despite the increase in the expenditures, we are going to hold the line. Uh, maybe see a little bit of decrease in our levy headroom, which means minimal impact to the tax rate. Um, we've got three main drivers here. We had the wage treatments for the town employees. I expect a lot of people have questions about that. And just in short, we did a, uh, we did a major study of the town employee compensation, and it was found that many employees were underpaid, and rather than lose them to better paying towns and then getting not nearly so good replacements because we don't pay well. We thought we like our employees, we like the, the job that they do for us, and we thought it was best to proactively retain them by bringing their salaries up to a comparable or near comparable value. And we can discuss those specific lines in general if that is what you want to do. Um, 
The, another driver was we lost our Tantasca High School rebate. That was uh, over $100,000 of income last year that has now disappeared. And the third one is the school budget. The uh, school is going up this year as it has always done. Uh, but we think, it's good. we think it's a good budget and we look forward to your support. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, uh, 2020 was a challenging year. Last year we made decisions or postponed a lot of decisions based on the level of uncertainty they had just as a community. Uh, throughout the time that we've had since then, uh, even though we've been working remotely and uh, communication has been difficult, the department heads, advisory committee, personnel committee, and the board of selectmen, with the support of the financial team, have worked to develop a budget that and, and substantial recommendations regarding warrant articles. Uh, and, and this budget and those articles will help us move forward and address the overall needs of the town. The, the significant difference that you see is, is based off of feedback from the Collins Center uh, and some local research for any positions that weren't included in their report, uh, that in place of that typical annual COLA, you've got the one-time salary adjustment across many positions and departments. Uh, as Tom said, this adjustment is critical to ensuring we can recruit and retain the right people to serve the community, okay? Uh, we do have a strong free cash position, okay? And you'll see that um, we're leveraging that strong free cash position to ensure that we're covering those items not covered within this budget uh, in a way that mitigates any impact uh, uh, to the community in terms of uh, future uh, cost um, and, and uh, any negative impact on the tax rate, okay? Uh, we've got some very dedicated volunteers and our current structure has gotten us where we've gotten to, uh, but it's really important to uh, support certain changes in structure that are reflected in the operating budget, including the decision to, to hire a town administrator, having a professional to ensure the day-to-day -day management of the town being effective and efficient to help us continue uh, to have the positive mo momentum that we have as a town and starting to, to get the right things done for the community, okay? Um, it, it's very similar to the position we were in a couple years ago when we chose to add a grant writer into the town and, and that has been a real investment in the future of Brookfield and what it's brought back to our community for, for the investment in having a person in that way. We, we stand to, to see the same sort of benefit by bringing in a town administrator. Thank you all for your time. All right. Need to reset my timer. All right. Everybody got their uh, Warren Book articles. Everybody got uh, line number one uh, budget item. Again, if you would like to change an item, uh, a line, an amount in a line item, please come forward to a microphone and make a motion to change that item. Otherwise. Uh, I'd be happy to entertain questions, but again, please try and refrain uh, to just an eye toward amending the line item. Line item number one, moderator salary, $50. Line number two, selectman salary, $6,000. Line number three, selectman administrative assistant wages, $46,289. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that we modify the line selected administrative assistant wages to $46,913. Motion has been made uh, to strike $46,289 to uh, and insert $46,913. Is there a second? I heard a second over there. Is there any further discussion? Uh, you have the microphone. Thank you. Uh, I would like to explain that as part of our procedure for doing the salary review of the employees, um, that some employees were overlooked and this would provide one of those employees with a 1.3% COLA. Uh, so they would not be left out in the, in the raise procedure. And we won't think the, it's important to do this for these employees. Is there any further discussion on the motion to strike 46,289 from Selectman Administrative Assistant Wages uh, to and insert $46,913? Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted.
uh, we have amended uh, the Selectman's Administrative Assistant wages to $46,913. Item number four, or line number four, Selectman Municipal Clerk wages $15,070. Line number five, grant writers wages $21,653. Okay, I think that's just the total. Line number seven, selectman expenses $8,100. Line number eight, selectman physical examination. Mr. Moderator, point yes. order. Um, did you miss the town administrator visit line? I did not hear you talk about it. The town administrator wages. It didn't have a line number, I'm sorry. Uh, let me go back. Item number six, town administrator wagers, $75,000. I'm terribly sorry, you're correct. Uh, is, is there any, any motion to change that number? Ms. Moderator? Yeah. I move that we replace the $75,000 number with $82,500. $82, Second. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the amount again? $82,500. $82,500, okay, very good. Uh, so we want to amend uh, this particular item by striking 75000 and inserting $82,500. Is there a second? I heard a second over here. Uh, you have the microphone for five minutes. Uh, Beth, would you like to talk to this or would you like me to? All right. uh, May I yield my good. time to... Thank you. Uh, so the fundamental reason to, to make the adjustment to this line item is that we, we have identified a primary candidate for this position based on that individual's experience and salary history. Uh, an, an appropriate level to make the offer at would be at the 82.5 level. Um, the, the initial 75 was, was notional. We knew that it was potentially overly conservative, uh, but we didn't want to go any higher in, in the um, planning stages until we had really identified a candidate and knew where we would need to be in order to uh, potentially execute a contract with them. Okay. Uh, the motion before us is to amend the town administrator wages from $75,000 to $82,500. Is there any further uh, discussion? Anybody? Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, all those in favor, raise your cards. I just want to get a look at what this looks like. Okay, lower your cards. All those, all those opposed, please raise your cards. Uh, the eyes have it. Uh, the motion or the uh, the line item, town administrator wages, has been amended to eighty-two thousand five hundred dollars. All right. I'll go back to line seven. Selectman expenses, $8,100. Selectman physical examinations, $800. Line number nine, selectman payment in lieu of taxes, $690. Line number 10, selectman computer maintenance, $21,079. Selectman town website, $1,930. Line number 12, selectman email 365, $6,840. Line number 13, grant writer's expenses, 1200 bucks. Selectman consulting expenses is zero. Uh, selectman computer acquisition, 6,000 uh, bucks. Central MA Regional Planning Commission, $1,020. Cable access, zero. Uh, the reserve fund of $35,000, line number 19. Legal services, line number 20, $80,000. Town accountant salary, zero. Town, town, uh, town accountant clerk, zero. Town accountant expenses, $5,500. Town accountant professional services, zero. Outsourced accounting services, $46,200. Line number 26, audit $15,000. Line number 28, advisory committee expenses, 200 bucks. Advisory committee uh, clerk salary, $537. Line number 30, advisory committee warrant books, 1,600 bucks. Yes. 
I move that we modify the temp advisory committee warrant books number from $1,600 to $2,000. Uh, there is a motion to um, strike $1,000 for advisory committee warrant books and insert $2,000. Is there, is there a second? Second. There is a second. Is there any uh, discussion? Would you like to discuss it or put it to a vote? I'd just like to explain that the, uh, when we printed these books for you this year, it came out to just under $2,000, so I think it's necessary for us to budget an appropriate amount for the coming year. Thank you. Any further discussion on the question? All those in favor of amending advisory committee warrant book from $1,600 to $2,000, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The motion is adopted. Advisory committee uh, warrant books are at two thousand dollars. Line number thirty-two: assessor stipends, one thousand five hundred bucks. Uh, principal assessor, principal assessor wage, fifty-four thousand six hundred and seven bucks. Assessor certification stipends, zero. Assessor clerk wage, sixteen thousand seven hundred and eighty-six. Assessor uh, consulting expenses, one thousand dollars. Assessor expenses, $8,705. Uh, treasurer wages, zero. Outsourced treasurer services, $83,000. Line number 42, treasurer consultant, zero. Line number 43, assistant treasurer wages, zero. 44, treasurer payroll services, $7,100. Treasurer expenses, line 45, $7,100. Uh, line number 47, collector salary, $53,581. Collector certification stipend, $1,000. Collector expenses, $9,650. Collector software, $4,990. Collector clerk, $2,600. Town clerk salary, $40,186. What's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, treasurer collector tax titles, $10,000, line 53. Sorry about that. Okay, back to line 54, town clerk salary, $40,186. Uh, I heard somebody. Uh, could you come to a microphone? Do you, again, I want to remind uh, the member to please uh, be thinking about amending this particular line item, uh, but what's your question? Uh, John Holcraft here. I just got a question. I've noticed there's um, large increases on the payroll, could, on the uh, wages. Could you just explain that so I don't have to put a hold in every single uh, town employee as we come to it? I think that's a that's a reasonable question. Would somebody uh, like to like to address that? I think that was addressed a little bit in their opening comments, but I think uh, some elaboration would be appropriate. Yes. Uh, as mentioned in the opening remarks, um, the Board of Selectmen and the advisory and personnel, the advisory board, excuse me, the advisory committee, the personnel board, and the Board of Selectmen uh, did a review of the employee salaries and we found that they were um, significantly below comparable salaries for comparable towns. And so therefore, in order to avoid the expense and hassle of training new employees that were possibly not as good as what we have because a low salary would not attract uh, as good a candidate as we have now. The intention was to raise the salary of the existing employees in order to maintain the talent that we already have in the town. Um, I didn't know we had such a great turnover in the town of Brookfield for town employees. And uh, my second question is what comparable towns did you get your uh, data from to compare to the town of Brookfield's uh, pay wages? I want to remind the member you're about in a minute, okay, and when he answers this question, your time is being used. I just want you to understand that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, is somebody going to answer that? Yes. Hi, Lori Marcus, town accountant. We used, um, I did the full study with the Collins Center. Um, they used multiple surrounding towns. I'm just trying to find the actual ones. They graded and stepped all of our employees when they did the compensation study back in 2019. 
and they used um, the surrounding towns utilized for the survey by them were Barry, Boylston, Leicester, Paxton, Petersham, Princeton, Rutland, Spencer, Sturbridge, West Boylston, and West Brookfield. And they used those towns based on the DLS data that they obtained. So the actual data was put through by them, and all I did in order to grade and step everybody was add the federal COLA that was due from 2019 until now. You have about 20 seconds. Um, those towns don't seem to be uh, comparable to the town of Brookfield. They're all, uh, the, the whole payout that way is a whole I'd, I'd ask the I'd ask the member to direct his uh, attention to the particular line item in question, which is, uh, I believe, uh, town clerk assistant wages, 4,912 bucks, is that what, which line are we on? I can, the town, town clerk wages, sorry about that, 40,186. I direct the member to please uh, consider either making a motion to amend this uh, or not. Um, can I get back to my basic question? I just wanted to know if that's why we had such a large increase. Uh, again, uh, I would the, just direct uh, member, excuse me, I would direct the member uh, to either seek to amend this item uh, or, or not. <laughs> no, I don't wish to amend it. I just wanted to know why okay. it was such a large. So I get my answer. All right, thank you. Okay. Is there uh, any further discussion on uh, the town clerk's hourly of $40,186? All right. Moving to line item number 55, town clerk assistant wages, 4912 Line number 56, town clerk expenses, $2,600. Line number 58, elections and registration wages, 6,053. Elections and registration expenses, 6,000 uh, bucks. Line number 60, no, I don't need to do that one, right? Uh, line number 61, conservation commission clerk wages, $1,960. Uh, conservation commission expenses, $333. Uh, planning board clerk wages one thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Um, I have a question for the chair of the advisory committee. Um, I'm not. I'm not uh, contesting this amount, but I do have a question. Um, our I, I would. I would really. If you're not going to contest the amount, I. I, I don't want to shut you down completely, but we have a lot of work to do, and if you're not going to contest the amount. Uh, then I'm sorry. I Mr. rather Moderator, it's not. It's a very concise question, and I require only one answer. Uh, I, so please, I, please uh, indulge me in this. Uh, it better be quick. Okay. Uh, Mr. Advisory Chair, if we run over this budget, and we have in the past because the hours that we, our clerk um, works are extremely variable, and we had a 50% cut here, would we be able to go to the reserve fund in mid-year or whenever it was required and request more funding? Yes. Thank you. All right. Is there any further discussion on planning board clerk wages, $1,960? Line number 66, advisory board salary, $2,500. Planning board, sorry, what did I say? Advisory board, I'm sorry. Planning board um, salary, $2,500. Planning board expenses, $2,332. Line number 69. Board of Appeals wages, 1960 bucks. Line number 70, Board of Appeals expenses, 1100 Line number 72, Municipal Custodian wages, $21,671. Line number 73, Municipal Property Maintenance and Improvements, $9,000. 74, Municipal Property Utilities, $5,000. Town Hall Improvements, 14000 uh, $250. Print uh, town, town report, $1,710. Municipal heating fuel, line number 78, $7,500. Uh, moving on to public safety and the police, line number 80. Uh, police wages, uh, full time, $257,518. Police chief salary, $90,000. Uh, police wages, part-time, zero. 
Line number 83, uh, police clerk, clerk wages, $15,195. Police tuition reimbursement, line number 80, uh, $5,000. I have that as line 83. Okay, I just want to make sure that I didn't do something wrong here, okay? Line number 84, police overtime wages, zero. Police wages overtime part-time, $121,312. Police expenses, uh, $66,466. Line number 88, fire wages, $51,584. Line number 89, uh, fire chief salary, $3,892. Line number 90, fire expenses, $34,000. Fire utilities, $9,500. Fire testing recertification, uh, $12,000. Fire fixed asset repair or replace, $15,000. Telephone contract leases, $6,510. Line number 96, building inspector salary, $18,498. 97, building inspector assistant wages, $598. Building, expe building inspector expenses and training, $300. Line number 100, gas and plumbing inspector salary, $4,581. <clears throat> Line 101, gas and plumbing inspector assistant wages, $382. Gas and plumbing inspector expenses and training, $440. Line 104, wire inspector salary, $4,548. Wire inspector assistant wages, $392. Wiring inspector, wiring inspector expenses and training, $1. Uh, line 108, zoning enforcement officer salary, $12,494. Line 109, zoning enforcement officer expenses, $380. Uh, line 111, emergency management agency, $3,500. Emergency Management Agency salary four hundred and seventy-four dollars. Blackboard Connect annual Blackboard Connect annual fee three thousand eight hundred dollars. Uh, line one fifteen Animal Control Officer salary six thousand six hundred and seventy-one dollars. Animal Control Officer assistant wages uh, seven hundred and fourteen dollars. Animal Control Officer expenses one thousand. $589. Line 119, parking ticket clerk and hearing officer salary, $250. Uh, tree warden expenses, $10,000, line 122. Oh, parking tickets, I'm sorry. Line number 120, parking ticket expenses, $83. I thought I said 119. 119 parking ticket, parking ticket clerk and hearing uh, officer salary 250 bucks. I'll go 120 again. Parking ticket expenses 83. Line number 122 tree warden expenses 10,000 dollars. 123 shade tree expenses 2,500 dollars. Ah, we're down to school. Schools, uh, school committee salary, $1,500. Regional school committee, $1,000. Regional school assessment, $1,748,474. Transportation assessment, $63,926. Elementary school expenses, $3,000,000. $228,636. Public Works Highway. Highway Superintendent wages $66,415. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that we amend the Highway Superintendent wages number from $66,415 to $67,163.
All right, motion has been made uh, to strike $66,415 and insert $67,163. Uh, is there a second? Second. I hear a second. Uh, would you like to speak to the motion? Five minutes. Yes, this is another instance of one of the employees who did not receive a, wa a raise under the uh, general wage treatment we did. And so similar to the executive assistant, uh, this would be a 1.3% COLA raise for this position. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? The motion before us is to amend line 131, highway superintendent wages to strike $66,415 and insert $67,163. Is there any further discussion on the question? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Uh, the line item has been amended to $67,163. Line number 132, highway operator wages, $107,058. Line 133, highway other wages, part-time and overtime, $6,424. Uh, line 134, highway office assistant, uh, administrative assistant, $29,640. 135, highway police detail flaggers, $2,400. Seasonal workers, $17,650. Highway expenses, $60,300. Highway utilities, uh, $10,800. Line, one, line 139, highway certifications, DOT physicals, and uh, license renewals, $900. Line 140, highway safety, $1,000. Line 141, Highway bridges, rails, and signs, $1,600. Municipal diesel fuel, $20,000. Line 143, municipal gasoline, $25,039. Snow and ice wages, $30,600. Snow and ice expenses, $45,000. Uh, let's see, street lights, uh, $15,000, line 148. You have a... Yeah, it doesn't matter, go ahead. Um, I believe all the lights in town were supposed to be changed to LED, and we have at least three that I know of that weren't changed to LED, which I assume are costing us more electricity. They're one at the town beach, which I think really needs to get done. Did you have a desire to change the number? I did not have a desire to change number, I just, just had a desire to, because we're spending money on something that was supposed to be done that we said we were going to do. Uh, if you're not going to make a motion to amend the line item, I, I'll, I'll grant a little bit of leeway to, to answer. Does anybody have an answer to the question? Uh, the, uh, Can we do an audit on the streetlights that still haven't been changed? I'm sorry, what was that? Can we do an audit? On the street lights that have not that would be out of order. I mean, we're. I'm just requesting. The, uh, I would call that out of order because you're I asking. Make a, I make a motion that the street light expense be zero. The motion has been made uh, to strike fifteen thousand dollars for street lights and insert the number zero. Uh, you have. Um, I'll give you five minutes to uh, argue your point. We're not going to take the time to audit something that was supposed to be. Oh, is there a second? Yeah. Sorry. If we're Thank not you. going to take the time to do an audit of what lights have been changed versus what lights haven't been changed, we shouldn't be spending any money. Okay. Do you have any further th any, anything further to say? No. Okay. Uh, is anybody uh, opposed to the motion to strike fifteen thousand? Uh, and uh, go to zero. Uh, Mr. You moderator, need, you're going to need to come to the. I am opposed to the motion, if okay. I may speak. Okay. Um, while I understand. You have two minutes. While I understand the citizen's concern, I think the appropriate venue for his concern is to attend a board of selectmen's meeting and to raise it there. I think attempting to defund the streetlights and affecting traffic safety is 
irresponsible and a stunt. But uh, I'm going to warn the member to be cautious about what you're saying here. And this is derogatory and heading towards a place where I don't want you to go. So please uh, direct it to the question. Do you, why should it be $15,000 rather than zero? And Ms. Smarter, I think it should remain at $15,000 simply because the traffic, for traffic safety reasons, we should light the lights and the concern and that defunding the streetlights is not the appropriate um, resolution for the, uh, for the other members' concern that he expressed. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am. Mr. Moderator, to the Board of Selectmen, is the figure that's on the budget sitting there right now reflect the change in the LED lights across the town for street lights? Or is this just a, a level funded um, number that you just inserted from, that was the same as last year? I would, I would ask the member, while I understand you want to, you want to ask a question, I really want to direct your attention to either reasons for why you support the motion to drop this number to zero, or, uh, or uh, just please address that particular question. Why do you want to drop it to zero? I don't want to drop it to zero, but I want to find out whether or not the figure that, the $15,000 figure is a level funded figure from the previous year, or does that reflect the LED lighting change that occurred in the town. Okay. Does anybody have an answer to the question? Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you? Yeah. Okay. That it is level funded from this year. Uh, current year to date uh, spending on that line has been $13,807. Uh, we may end up with a small uh, surplus in that account, but I would expect that it's going to spend close to that 15000 So, yes, it's level funded. We'll take a note uh, regarding the concern as to whether or not all of the late business was still available. Could you give us that figure again that was sure. expended? Sure, 13807 um, dollars and thirty cents. Sorry, Thank my you. arms aren't quite long enough anymore. Is there any further discussion on the motion to strike uh, uh, to lower the street light amount from fifteen thousand dollars to zero? Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion to reduce street lights from fifteen thousand dollars to zero, please say aye. All those opposed, say no. No. The noes have it. The motion has failed. Thank you. Uh, is there any, uh, any anything else on street lights? Uh, cemetery wages, line number 149, I believe, is the line we are on. $18,995. Uh, cemetery superintendent salary, line number 150, $5,833. Cemetery expenses, $5,922. Line 152, cemetery improvements, zero. All right, and we're on to health and sanitation. Uh, I believe we're on one line 155. Uh, Board of Health salary, $3,839. Board of Health clerk wages, $5,970. Board of Health agent, $700. Board of Health Animal Inspector salary $1,212. Board of Health Title V Administration $500. Line 160 Board of Health Expenses $4,000. Line 161 Community Health Program $950. Line, one, line 163 uh, Transfer Station Wages $27,198. Mr. Moderator? Uh, yes. I move that we modify the transfer station wages line item from $27,198 to $27,798. A motion has been made to strike $27,198 and insert $27,798. Uh, is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, you have five minutes to speak to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'll make it brief. Uh, the, this account 
entails um, two employees who did not receive, or who are, we are awarding the 1.3% COLA raise to where they would not otherwise have a raise. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the, on the motion? Uh, the motion is to amend transfer station wages uh, by striking $27,198 uh, and inserting $27,798. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, transfers. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Thank you. Uh, we have just amended transfer station wages uh, to $27,798. Uh, I thought I addressed that, but I will address it again. Line number 161, I believe, is the one you were looking at. Uh, community health program, $950. Uh, line 164, transfer station well tests, $14,000. Transfer station expenses, $120,000. Line 167, council on aging outreach worker, $1,600. Line 168, council on aging Tri-Valley crisis intervention, $955. Line 169, Council on Aging Medicare, Medicare, $2,000. Line 170, Council on Aging Expenses, $1,104. Line 172, Director of Veterans Services Salary is zero. Veterans Agent Salary, 5064 Veterans Agent Expenses, $240. Veterans Agent Case Work, $85,000. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, line number 178, I believe. Uh, library Direct Wages, $53,581. Library Custodian Wages, $9,078. Library Assistant Wages, $54,085. Line 181. Line 181, library, Saturday, holidays, vacation, 2,550 bucks. Library expenses, $13,000. Library utilities, $2,400. Library books, videos, periodicals, $33,729. Uh, Recreational commission, line number 186, $7,695. South Pond Beach expense, 1,250. Historical Commission, line number 189, $1,655. Line 190, Memorial, Memorial Day, $3,300. Cultural Council uh, expenses, 8,500. Line number 193, uh, Police Station Principal, $55,000. Police station interest, $33,012. Sawmill Dam principal, $8,025. Sawmill Dam interest, $2,526. Line number 198, Worcester County Retirement, $371,251. Unemployment insurance, $20,000. Group, group health and life insurance, $691,000. Medicare Town Share, 61500 Line number 202, General Insurance, $148,782. Uh, let's see, Water Department, Line 205, Water Department Commission Salary, uh, Commissioner's Salary, $1,800. Water Department Clerk Wages, $15,199.95. Uh, line 207, Water Department Superintendent Salary, $78,413. Mr. Moderator? Uh, yes. I move that we modify the Water Department Superintendent Salary from $78,413 to $79,432. The motion has been made to strike $78,413 from Water Department Superintendent Salary and insert $79,432. Is there a second? I hear a second. Is there any discussion? Sir, you have five minutes on your motion. 
Thank you. Uh, the water department superintendent is another employee who was not otherwise receiving a raise. Therefore, this should be a 1.3% COLA raise for the for Mr. Clark. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion to uh, amend the superintendent water superintendent salary from 78,413 to $79,432? Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, say no. no. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, the water superintendent salary has been amended to $79,432. Line number 208, water department secondary operator wages, $7,319. Water department temporary. Yes. For the secondary operator, I would like to modify. I. I Move that we modify the amount from seven thousand three hundred nineteen dollars to seven thousand five hundred nineteen dollars. Five hundred nineteen, you said. Yes, seven thousand five hundred nineteen. Okay, very good. Okay, a motion has been made to strike seven hundred seven seven thousand three hundred nineteen dollars from water department secondary operator wages and insert seven thousand five hundred nineteen dollars. Is there a second? Second. I heard a second. Is there any discussion, sir? You have five minutes. Same reason as the superintendent. One point three percent raise. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion to amend water department secondary operator wages from $7,319 to $7,519? Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, the water department secondary operator wages have been amended to $7,519. Uh, line number 209, Water Department Temporary Help, $1. Uh, line number 210, Water Department Expenses, $40,915. Okay, uh, we are at the end. So now uh, we are going to take a vote uh, on the main motion, uh, which was to adopt the budget uh, as it has now been amended. I don't know what the dollar amount is, but we know what the amendments are. Does anybody have that dollar amount? I can have no, that's okay. Uh, any, all those in favor of adopting this budget as we've amended it here just now, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. no. Uh, the ayes have it. The, uh, the budget has been adopted as amended. Okay, article number three. Uh, yes. I move that the town transfer from free cash $188.74 to fund prior year invoices for National Grid, Verizon Business, Stonebridge Press, and Timothy Simon. Uh, there's been a motion uh, that the town transfer from free cash $188.74 to fund prior year invoices for National Grid, Verizon Business, Stonebridge Press and Timothy Simon. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. There, there is a second uh, to the motion. Uh, this is a four-fifths vote because it is dealing, I believe, it's dealing with a with a past uh, with a past year. So uh, you have five minutes to explain your motion and debate why we should do this. Fundamentally, we owe the vendors the money, and just the time of of, uh, of how the invoices came in meant that they were omitted from last year's payments. I got it, I got it, yeah, I got it. I'm sorry, are you done? Okay, sorry about that. I, you know, if you're done, you're done. Uh, is there, uh, anybody opposed, anybody, uh, any opposition to this particular, anybody want to speak against uh, this particular motion? Anybody want to speak uh, further uh, in support of the motion? Okay, so uh, here's the deal, right? So this is a four-fifths vote. Uh, unanimous means we can just move on. Uh, if it's not unanimous, then we're going to have to count the vote because we need to know. Okay, just want to explain this is a four fifth vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion for the town to transfer from free cash $188.74 to fund prior year invoices for National Grid, Verizon Business, Stonebridge Press, and Timothy Simon, please say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. The vote is unanimous. Uh, we have made the transfer. Thank you very much. Article number four. Mr. Moderator, I move, yes. 
I move that the town transfer from free cash $1,032 to fund the prior year deficit in fund 700 police extra duty. A motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash $1,032 to fund the prior year uh, deficit and fund 700 police extra duty. Is there a second? I'll second that. Uh, here is a second. Uh, would you like to uh, speak to your motion? This is a deficit that's been carried for a number of years because of a dispute over who was responsible for a particular police detail. Uh, and at this time, it, it would be the financially appropriate thing to go ahead and zero out the account. All right. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition to the motion? Anybody that wants to speak further in support of the motion? All right, once again, this is a four-fifth vote. Uh, if it's not unanimous, we are going to have to take a count. Uh, all those in favor of transferring from free cash 1,032 bucks to fund a prior year uh, deficit and fund 700 police extra duty, please say aye. Aye. Every, anyone that's opposed, say no. No. Okay, we got a count. I heard a no. Uh, constables? Oh, I'm sorry. So are the constables ready? Uh, okay, all those in favor, please just raise your yellow card. raise your yellow cards. I have one. I have one. Uh, I'm just going to declare this uh, an adopted motion. The vote is 78 to 2. Uh, the motion is adopted by a four-fifths vote. All right. Article number five. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move the town transfer from free cash the sum of $1,255.31 to fund the prior year deficit in the account 000220-570-0006 and special town meeting of 11918-813 fire truck report. There has been a motion made uh, to transfer from free cash $1,255.31 to fund the prior year deficit in account 000220-570006 at a special town meeting 11-9-2018-813 uh, fire truck replacement. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, yes. This was a, it's a prior year deficit from um, 11 9 18 in that account, in the fire truck replacement account. Okay. Uh, anybody want to speak in opposition to the motion? Uh, anyone further want to speak in support of the motion? All right. Uh, again, this is a four fifths vote. Uh, so all those in favor of transferring from free cash $1,255.31 to fund the prior year deficit uh, in account 000-220-570-0006 at a special town meeting 11-9-2018-813 fire truck replacement account, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Uh, constables, tellers. Uh, uh, Mr. Constable, Mr. Lapierre, we need to do a count. You all set? 
Okay, all those in favor, please raise your yellow card. Second, uh, a oh, vote of 50 to 2. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, 90, 50. This is my worst thing. All right, then. Uh, article number 6. Uh, Mr. Moderator? Yeah. I would, I would like to withdraw the motion. Very good. Article number 7. Uh, Mr. Moderator? I move the town vote to amend Chapter 5, Section 8 of the General Bylaws to add the new revolving funds and to set FY 2021 spending of these revolving funds as printed in Article 7 of the warrant. And the explanation for... Uh, hold on one second. Uh, a motion has been made uh, to uh, amend Chapter 5, Section 8 of the General Bylaws to add new revolving funds and to set uh, fiscal year 2021 spending limits of these resolving, revolving funds as printed in Article 7 uh, of the warrant. Is there a second to the motion? Second. There is a second to the motion. Now, if you would like to take five minutes to speak to your motion, feel free. It's printed in our books here. It says that um, FY21 Special Town Meeting, Article 20, requested that the town direct funds to offset the operating cost of South Pond Beach and further start directing all fees and fines collected to a fund specific for the beach use. This cannot be accomplished with the general fund as wish a result, the revolving fund has to be established for this. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to speak in opposition to the motion? I'm sorry, would you like to come to a motion? Uh, would you please repeat uh, what, you, what you said? In FY21, Special Town Meeting Article 20, request the town direct funds to offset the operating cost at South Pond Beach and further start directing all fees and fines collected to a fund specific for the beach use. This cannot be accomplished through the general fund as such. A revolving fund has to be established. Okay, uh, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition? Again, I want to direct your attention to why you oppose the motion. Mr. Moderator, my understanding is, is that the recreation who were in charge of the South Pond already has a revolving account that they use for all of their recreation things that they do that can't go through, that they don't expense out of their general fund. So why are we creating another revolving account for just South Pond if the recreation is controlling what happens down to South Pond as part of their budget? Uh, so I, I, there, there's a question here, why are we doing this if there's a fund that already exists, I believe is what the question is. Yes, well, the Recreation Committee does not have uh, control of South Pond any, any longer, and we're, we have a South Pond Beach Committee. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else, uh, anybody want to speak in support of the motion? I'd like to make a motion. To, or I'd like to make an amendment to the motion to modify that revolving account to be $10,000 and not $20,000. Do we have a... We do have an amount on it, yes. There's a, there's a uh, is that with it? Yep. 
Uh, so is that within the bounds of the article, uh, Town Council? Okay. So you want to move? What was your motion again? My you motion is to to amend the amount from twenty thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars. Right. So there's been a motion made uh, to amend the amount that's uh, that's there from twenty thousand to ten thousand dollars. Is there a second to the motion? Second. There's a second to the motion. Uh, you have five minutes to speak to your motion. My understanding is, is that South Pond is not open that much. I don't know what kind of expenses except for the porta party and the trash removal down there that we would need to expend $20,000 in the course of a, a season for, for South Pond. We don't hire a lifeguard, so we have no lifeguard funding. Um, it used to be that our, our highway department used to take care of the trash removal, which they did it as part of their normal weekly job. And then the porta potty, we only have it down there for so many months. We don't have any more swimming lessons, so why would we need a budget that would be that high in a revolving account when we wouldn't be expending that, that, that amount of money in there, number one, and we wouldn't be collecting that kind of money in there. So it seems like it's an inflated amount. Okay. Uh, would anybody like to speak uh, in opposition to the motion? And the motion is uh, to amend the amount uh, in this item for, or in this, uh, what is it, in the bylaws? What is it? Yeah, it's in the bylaws. It's in the bylaws, to amend, it, so is this an amendment to the bylaws? No. No. No, okay, very good, I just want to check. So we're going to amend the amount that's in the bylaws from $20,000 to $10,000. Does anybody want to speak in opposition uh, to this motion? I would, um, I would like to speak in opposition of the motion, Mr. Okay. okay, you have you have two minutes. Um, so fundamentally, since this is a change in the bylaw, while in this next year we might not necessarily need to go to the extent of twenty thousand dollars for an expenditure limit, the intent of this article is to establish this revolving fund so that in the future, as we mature the support that we're providing to to the uh, beach there at South Pond, that we may in the future have both the funds from fees collected, um, you know, or, or fines or, or anything associated with the beach that it could in the future either fund a life, uh, lifeguard or, or have those funds in a way that doesn't have direct impact on the taxpayers for a limited service, okay, to have those funds available in order to, to do things like better the beach or better the services. There's no reason to set an artificial limit at $10,000 because we won't use it this year because it doesn't get funded. It is a place to hold those fees that are collected separate of the tax collections. Thank you. All right. Um, is there any, yeah, we just gotta make sure that no one else wants to speak to the article, the, the, the motion, that's all I wanna do. Is there anyone else that would like to speak uh, in support uh, of the motion? Yes, I do. The voice from somebody. <laughs> Who the heck got it? Oh, it's way up there. Oh, there he is. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. You're very welcome, um, sir. I'd like to make one point. The, also, the highway department takes care of the, uh, the, the maintenance of the lawn and uh, the weeds and so on and so forth. If we're gonna do things down in South Pond in the future, that's when we should vote for the money, not now. 10,000 is more than enough. Uh, I'm sorry, please. Uh, does anybody want to speak in opposition uh, to the motion at this point? Uh, go ahead, you're up, your last time. Okay. Two so, minutes. Um, <clears throat> speaking of lifeguard salary, uh, lifeguard salary would actually come out of general funds. It would not come out of this revolving account. It can't come out of this revolving account because it is a payroll account. And that's a payroll item. We would be paying somebody a salary. So it can't come out of a revolving account because it's not, it's not pervy to a revolving account item. So we wouldn't be covering the cost of a lifeguard there. Um, out of that revolving account. We would be covering other expenses, um, but not that. All right. Uh, does anybody else wish to speak in, in uh, opposition to the, uh, to the motion? Uh, so, okay. It takes a couple, yeah, okay. It takes it takes a couple of seconds for it to for it to warm. Just leave it on, and it'll go. It takes about five seconds. 
you can actually pay um, payroll and expenses through a revolving account. Um, you set in the bylaw what is allowed to be paid and what is allowed to be collected. Um, and that's why we set up the revolving funds in the bylaw. All we're setting is a statutory limit on what we're allowed to expend. We're not paying any money out of the general fund. We're not collecting money, money into the general fund. It's just a holding account. Okay. Would you like to speak? You have two minutes. Uh, just a quick question, Mr. Moderator. Is this completely funded by fines and anything else collected at the beach? Meaning nothing is coming out of the general uh, fund, correct? All of the money that, we're, that we would be collecting uh, from the beach is this $20,000. Okay, hang on. Uh, can anybody answer the question? Yes. Go. That's the, the, the revolving fund can't have any deposits from the general fund. So this limit is just a limit of how much we can collect? It's how much you can expend per year. From the collection. From exactly. The Thank you. Appreciate yep. it. Mr. Moderator, uh, yeah. move the question. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's see if we can avoid that. Is there any further discussion on the motion uh, to amend the bylaws from $20,000 to $10,000? Hearing none, uh, the, the motion is to reduce the amount of $20,000 that's in the bylaws to $10,000. All those in favor of reducing the amount from $20,000 to $10,000, please say aye. All those opposed to the motion, please say no. No. Uh, the no's have it. The motion has failed uh, to amend. We are now back to the main motion. Uh, is there any further discussion on the main motion to Mr. amend Mr. Chapter Moderator? 5, Section 8? Uh, yes. Excuse me. Just, just a point of order. Uh, it, normal town meetings, when people get up, they say who they are, where they live, all that sort of thing, so we know who's talking. Could we do that? In the uh, yes, I, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so where was I? Did I take the vote yet? Okay. What's that? I voted on the Okay, is there any further discussion on the main motion uh, to amend Chapter 5, uh, Section 8 of the General Bylaws to the revolving funds and set uh, the fiscal year 2021 spending limits uh, to those revolving funds as printed in Article 7 of the War? Very good. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 8. Yeah. Um, James Cook, Race Critter Road. Mr. Moderator, I move that we vote to rescind the 2020 special town meeting vote, creating the position of town administrator. Second. Uh, a motion has been made uh, to rescind the 2020 special town meeting vote creating a position of town administrator. Uh, I heard a second out there, so we do have a motion on the floor. You have five minutes, sir, to speak to your motion. Hold on one moment while I reset the clock. Wouldn't <laughs> want to jip you, Mr. Cook. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. The vote we took last fall was a big step for the town of Brookfield, and that's why I think we need to reconsider it. The town administrator for a town this size is pretty uncommon in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Most towns of this size don't have a town administrator because they can't really afford it. So I think we need to reconsider the value of this position and the cost of this position. I know the proponents have said two things as to why we need this. The first is the selectmen don't do their job. Well, having a town administrator is not gonna solve that problem. The town administrator works for the board of selectmen. If the selectmen aren't doing their job, you need to find new selectmen. The other argument I've heard in favor of this position is that it'll make the town more efficient. Efficiency is defined as providing more or the same amount of services at less cost. I'm skeptical a town administrator is going to solve this, the town spending problem, as well evidenced tonight by the fact that we gave a huge increase to town employees without a fully done survey looking at comparable cost. We have a spending problem. We don't have an efficiency problem. Well, actually, we do. I think putting a town administrator forward is not going to solve the problems this town faces. All this is going to do is add to the tax burden. 
and the taxes are high enough in the town of Burfield already. We don't need to add to it. Thank you. Anybody uh, that would like to speak in opposition? Just a question of legality. Would the town clerk verify that there was no such uh, vote taken at the 2020 special town meeting? Uh, there's, there's kind of a point of order. Was there a motion take? Was there a vote taken? Mr. Clerk? There was not a vote taken to create the position of town administrator at the 2020 special okay. meeting. This says 2020 special town meeting. Positions created the fall special uh, town oh, meeting. Would I, would, let's just check what, what what we have here. We need to discover whether or not that's actually correct. So, um, I just want to be clear, I, I, I need to be clear, and I think maybe there might be some questions out there. So, your point of order that you're raising is that this motion is actually out of order because the position for town, town administrator was not created at the 2020 special town meeting. Okay, uh, and so that's the point of order that she's making, and if, that is a, and, and if that's true, then the motion is out of order. Uh, so I just want to... Well, then, Mr. Moderator, and I would ask to make a friendly amendment. Uh, I go, if the member would please stand down so we can check the, the, the appropriateness of the point of order. Uh, I, I, I need to rule on the point of order uh, before we can go any further. Thank you. Is there any way that we're going to be able to sort of do this? able uh, to make a specific determination on your point of order. I am going to rule it out of order because we cannot. Town Council has recommended to me uh, that we just go ahead and move forward with this uh, and then if it turns out that it's incorrect, I believe it would it would likely, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what the ramifications of that would be, but uh, Town Council says move forward uh, to vote on this. So uh, at the moment, uh, we still have a motion on the, uh, we still have a motion on the floor. Uh, and I need someone to speak in uh, support, Mr. Cook. You've spoken once on the question. If no one else is seeking to speak on the question, I'll give you another shot at the apple. Uh, but we need to we need to follow what the rules are that we establish. So, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition or in support uh, of this particular motion? This is in support. Actually, it's. Uh I don't know whether I support it or oppose it, so I, ha I have a question. 
Okay. If the, de the date can't be determined at this meeting, and it proceeds and is voted one way or the other, that vote is then official, and however it turns out, that's the way it is, even if the date is wrong. This thing is delayed a little bit, so they ought to excuse me when I start talking. You don't hear me, um, and I'll get used to this before the end of the night, I'm sure. Uh, you're, you're, you're kind of making the same point of order. Uh, ultimately, what will happen is if uh, this motion moves forward and it rescinds something that never happened, then it never happened, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, we're going to just move forward uh, with debate and voting on this motion. Uh, as though it's a legitimate motion. I have made my ruling and I will not accept any other points of order on this particular question as to whether or not it's properly before us. Town Council has told me that it is and so I'm going to move forward. Uh, is there anybody that seeks to speak in opposition to the motion? I would. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Oops. Oh, uh, opposition? Yeah, Al Jones, Al Go for broke. I have the last of the special town meeting warrant. Okay, I, I, I don't want to address this any longer. I we are not going to take this up any further. So if you want to, uh, uh, you know, oppose this motion, go ahead and speak to your opposition to the motion. But I'm no longer going to question anything about uh, whether or not this is a proper motion before us. Well, Mr. Moderator, to clarify, the motion is to uh, to the motion is to get, get rid of. The, uh, the vote that didn't Great. happen. No, the motion right now is we're assuming that it did happen at the 2020 special town meeting and that the position was created then and the motion is to rescind that particular action. And if that action didn't take place, if we voted, I don't understand. Then a rescission of something that, I'm sorry, I am no longer gonna take up this particular question. Uh, you either speak in opposition to this motion or in support of the motion, or please take a seat. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody that would speak in opposition? Yes. Is there I anybody would. that would like to speak in uh, opposition or support? Opposition. Okay. Go for broke. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, your name and your address has been asked. And I okay. Uh, as I said before, my name's John Holcraft, J.D. Holcraft, Dave Holcraft. Uh, I get a few points of uh, few points of views and questions here on this. Um, we hire this individual for this position. Is are we going to get our money back for what we shell out? Is she going to save the town a uh, hundred thousand or whatever we um, whatever we pay this this individual? And number two, is she going to be able to watch? Uh, I, I would ask the gentleman to please address the motion that's that's before us. We are not talking about the administrator's position. We are not talking about the salary of the position. We are talking about rescinding a vote that was taken at special town meeting in 2020 to establish the position of uh, administrative uh, assistant, administrator, town administrator. Uh, so if you are in opposition to this motion, please speak in opposition to it. Or if you are in support, please sp speak in support of it. I thought I was doing that. <clears throat> You're speaking about the position and the person that's there. Okay. All oh, this this position is it's not going to be able to be our uh, great savior, as everybody thinks, for the town of Brookfield. It's not going to do that. All it's going to do is expand our budget. We're going to be shelling out more money, and we're going to have a higher tax rate. And what the accounting and the tax collector and the treasurer's office is still not going to be straightened out because we hired this individual. We have a good person in the front office, uh, and I think we should maybe give her some training a little bit more, and I think we should keep her there and not hire this administrator. And furthermore, the administrator gets its matching orders from the selectmen. And if they're not doing their job, she's not going to do hers. Uh, Money out the window. Uh, may I please direct your 
attention. Th these are remarks. All right, thank you, Mr. Moderator. You're welcome. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak? That was in support, I presume. Is anybody in opposition? Anybody want to Mr. speak Moderator, in opposition? Yes. I would like to speak in opposition. You have two minutes. Two points. In, this, in the June 2019 annual town meeting, Article 23, to see if the town will vote to change the town of Brookfield bylaws to include the full-time position of a town administrator. The position was established at the June 2019 annual town meeting. In addition, this town has a $9 million budget that we just voted on. And you, we, some of us expect three part-time people who can only talk to each other about managing the town when they meet in session to run a $9 million budget. If you set the school aside, there's still $4 million there. $4 million of our money that we have appropriated to this. And you expect three part-time, I speak to those who support this article, you expect three part-time people to do it. The town is, I don't see any of you running for that, for the selectmen, to run the town better as you demand it be done. So we have the selectmen who are voted. Why don't we give them the tool to run the town better with a full-time employee? Thank you. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. No, we're not going to do that. I'm sorry. I'll throw anybody I see clapping out, and I'll talk, tell you to go talk to the constable, please. Please, uh, let's just be respectful. I do not, I, I absolutely abhor that. Uh, so please, uh, do not do that. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Cook, there is someone else that appears that wants to speak, so uh, would the member please come to the microphone? You should probably state your name. I don't know if you stated it before. Or... I did not. Oh, Patricia Washburn, 12 Maple Street. Um, we're talking about a position of a person who's going to get a high salary. Uh, please address your remarks to me Sorry. and into the microphone so everybody can hear you. <clears throat> We're talking about a person who is going to get an extremely high salary, um, who is going to be reporting to the Board of Selectmen. Um, as Mr. Cook said, it's an efficiency issue. The Board of Selectmen are meeting what, every other week, maybe once a week. Maybe either we do one of two things in our town. We either increase the amount of board, uh, uh, the, the amount of members on our board of selectmen so that we can efficiently run our town better with the $9 million that we spend a year, or our selectmen start doing their job, like everybody keeps saying, and meet more to order for them to do what they're elected to do. And this is a position that they chose to run for. You aren't appointed to these positions because you... You need to respect, you need to speak okay, to me. Okay, well, that is being respectful, okay? They were elected to this position because they chose to run for this position. They knew what they were getting into when they ran to run for this position to be elected. They knew what the position entitled. Some of them have already been elected here twice. So it's not like they ran one term, they've already done multiple terms. So they knew what the job entitled. They know what the job entitles. We don't need to go and spend more money and put ourselves closer to that two and a half levy limit that we're already pushing at this point. So at the last town meeting that we had, we were very close to our levy limit. And you know, when our taxes are going up at the rate that it's going up, in all the other towns around us, their rates are not going up. And there isn't a town near us that has an administrator that's, that's even bigger than the size of our town. You got five seconds. So we need to really consider this position and what it in, entails that this up. person's going to do. Your time is up. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so that was, in, uh, that was in support. Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition uh, to the motion? Mr. Moderator? Uh, 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 let's see here. You've already spoken to the question, so and it appears that Mr. Cook has, has been standing there patiently, so. Uh, I'll wait. Uh, Mr. Cook, you have your last two minutes. Okay. As I said earlier, I think we need to think long and hard about this. Um, as my previous speaker alluded to, frankly, instead of creating the position of the town administrator, maybe we should have raised the salaries of the Board of Selectmen. There are other alternatives we could have considered that probably would have been able to streamline this government, bring down taxes without imposing a new cost burden on the taxpayers or this high cost tax burden. Again, think long and hard, folks. All right. 
Um, there's actually, well, he only raised the point of order. He hasn't really spoken uh, in opposition or support of the motion. So if you'd like to speak in uh, support or opposition. I am against this motion. Okay, go ahead. You've got two minutes. To Mr. Reagan's point through you, Mr. Moderator, if this were a $9 million corporation, if this were a $9 million corporation and we were selling shares to investors and we said we had three part-time people that meet every other week to run a $9 million corporation, nobody's buying shares. And to the question of the tax rate, it has gone from $19.62 to $17.99 per thousand over the past three or four or five years. Okay. Uh, you're up. Mr. Jones answered the question I intended to ask. Thank you. Did you want to speak? Anybody else want to speak to the motion? Okay. Two minutes. I'm actually speaking in opposition to this motion. As just brought up in 2019 at the annual town meeting, the vote was 64 to 51 in favor of creating this job. In 2020, at the special town meeting, the vote was 69 to 27 to fund it. I'd say that was a pretty clear mandate that this town was in favor of not only creating but funding this position. I also would like to speak to the fact that this is being made into a personal attack on the select board. Uh, excuse me, that is inappropriate remarks. You're accusing somebody of doing something. Please refrain from I will rephrase it then. I do, I do not think that asking for town administrator is a reflection on the actions or the competence of this board. And I don't think that is a valid argument. Ms. Washington. Uh, I have, you know, uh, Mr. Jones, our assessor brought up the fact that the tax rate has gone down, but the valuation of each person's home has gone up, which has then increased the overall amount of taxes that people are paying. You can lower the tax rate, but when you raise the valuation of everybody's town, everybody's home in the town and everybody's business in the town, it does make the taxes go up, which means people are paying more money out of their pockets for taxes. You can say what you want about the tax rate, but it's not just the tax rate that reflects, reflects what people are paying for taxes. And that's what they're forgetting. You can, you, you know, you can say it all you want that the tax rate's lower, but I know that every time I look at my tax bill, the value of my house keeps going up and up and up, so I pay more taxes out of my pocket. So I'm not winning by any stretch of the imagination when the tax rate goes down. Okay. Uh, is there any further debate? Mr. Holcraft. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to make a couple points. Um, the big problems that we've had with our town is the treasurer's department and the accounting. Maybe we should take some dis so uh, I I, I, the, I'd like to finish if I could, Mr. Moderator. No, you may not, because you're making um, comments that are not germane to the motion in question. The motion is whether or not to eliminate, to rescind the vote from 2020 special town meeting to, to, to add the town uh, administrator. So please, if you, want us, if you want to speak in support of this, tell us why you support the motion uh, to rescind that action. I'm opposed to it, and I'm going to say that I think we should put a full-time treasurer in and a full-time accountant, and then we would not have problems. That's where our big problem is. We do not need a town administrator. None of the other towns have it. Why should we? All right. Is there any further, uh, any further, any further debate? Okay, uh, yes, uh, we do need to do that. Uh, the motion is uh, to rescind a 2020 special town meeting vote creating the position of town administrator. Okay, so it's basically to eliminate the position of town administrator. All right, everybody clear on what the motion is? By rescinding that action that was taken back in the 2020 special town meeting, uh, you are eliminating town administrator. Okay, everybody clear? So if you want to keep the town administrator, if you want to uh, get rid of the town administrator or the position of town administrator, you want to vote yes. Uh, and if you want to hang on to the position of town administrator in the bylaws, you want to vote no. All right, everybody am I clear on that? Uh, a yes is, it, is, is wants, to get, wants to eliminate the town administrator position and a vote no is to keep it. 
Okay, so all those in favor of eliminating the position of town administrator, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the noes have it, the motion fails. All right, article number uh, nine. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town establish a capital stabilization account for the purpose of funding capital expenses as defined in Town of Brookfield bylaws. Okay, a motion has been made to establish a capital stabilization account for the purpose of funding capital expenses as defined in Town of Brookfield bylaws. Is there a second to the motion? Second. I hear a second. Uh, would you, you have five minutes uh, to speak to your motion. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I have nothing to add. Pardon? I have nothing to add. You have nothing to add. All right. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition uh, to this motion to establish a capital stabilization account for the purposes of funding capital expenses as defined in Town of Brookfield bylaws? Uh, hang on one second. All right. Mr. Carter. The problem I have with this motion is that in the past, years, Brookville used to have a history of fiscal prudence. When many capital items came before this body, they were turned down. I view this as a way to circumvent what has been the fiscal prudence of this town. This is a, basically a special kitty to pay for projects that have been turned down in the past many times. I say no. All right. Would anybody like to speak in uh, support of the motion? Mr. Mr. Uh, yes. Mr. Moderator, uh, the, the capital stabilization account is a stabilization account that has all of the same rules that apply to it as the general stabilization account. The only difference is that it it's fundamentally gives the visibility that these are monies that are earmarked for addressing the capital needs of the town. It still requires the vote that you would normally take in order to take money out of stabilization in order to fund the capital improvement projects. It just gives us that straight up visibility that that is money that's, that will typically be earmarked for actual capital improvements within the town and not to, to fund some other uh, need of the town uh, that is not covered by raising appropriate. Okay, uh, anybody else want to speak in opposition uh, to the motion? Anybody want to speak in support uh, of the motion? Okay, this is a uh, town council is standing up because he wants to remind me that this is a this is going to take a two thirds vote. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, I don't even think I'm gonna chance it. Well, I don't know. I'll chance it. All those in favor of uh, establishing the capital stabilization account for purposes of funding capital expenses as defined in the town of Brookfield. Bylaws say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, I think I, uh, let's just see the cards go up. All those in favor, raise your cards. All those opposed, raise your cards. I got four to everybody else. Uh, I, I, I'm going to call it a two thirds vote. Uh, so the vote is adopted. The motion. Uh, to establish a capital stabilization account for purposes of funding capital expenses as defined in town bylaws uh, has been adopted. Uh, articles, uh, articles 10 through 18. So a little introduction here. Uh, these are standard um, uh, articles that we vote on as a block. Uh, generally, there is little to no opposition to these uh, to these articles. You should take a look in your warrant uh, to pay attention to those. Uh, if there is any one of those articles that you do not want to vote in as a block, please let me know. Uh, but let's have a motion for articles uh, 10 through 18. Uh, Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town approve articles 10 through 18 as printed in the warrant, except that the phrases or take any action relative thereto be omitted and the sum of $1 be transferred from free cash for purposes of funding article 18. Um, so, uh, the motion is to approve articles 10 through 18 as printed in the warrant, except that the phrases 
uh, or to take any action relative thereto be omitted and the sum of one dollar be transferred for free cash for purposes of funding Article 18. Uh, is there a second on the motion? Second. There is a second on the motion. Uh, is there any debate? Uh, sir, you have five minutes to uh, make any statement about, the, about this. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I have no further statements as you already made them. I'd like to hear that. Okay. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition uh, to this particular motion? Anybody want to withdraw any of the art, or any of the articles within uh, within that block? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting articles 10 through 18 as printed in the warrant, except uh, that the phrases or take any action relative thereto be omitted and the sum of one dollar be transferred for pre cash for purpose of funding article 18, say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Uh, the motion has been adopted. Uh, uh, let's see. Mr. Moderator. So, yes. Uh, I would like to make a motion, um, or I move that the town take Articles 31 and 32 out of order. Okay, there is a motion uh, <coughs> to take Articles 31 uh, and 32 uh, out of order. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Uh, okay, would you like to uh, speak to the motion? Uh, town, uh, excuse me, Mr. Moderator, I would like to defer to Town Council. Town Council. Hello, uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, my name is Jeffrey Blake. I'm your Town Council. With respect to these two borrowing articles, as some of you may know that um, under the prior uh, 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 Chapter 39, Section 9, a municipality could not hold a town meeting outside its geographic limits unless it had a bylaw to do so. This town does not have such a bylaw. However, when COVID hit, the legislature passed emergency legislation that allowed any town to hold a town meeting outside its geographic limits. Um, and that's what we're doing here tonight. Unfortunately, as of, or I shouldn't say unfortunately, fortunately, as of June 15th, that emergency declaration will be lifted and all of that emergency uh, legislation will, will then dissolve, if you will. Um, so therefore, we may not be able to hold a special a town meeting outside of our geographic limits after, the, uh, after June 15th. We believe, or it could happen because this article falls, these two articles falls much later in the warrant, that we wouldn't get to them tonight. Uh, since these two articles are large borrowing articles, uh, in order to get the money, we would have to be bonded. We have reached out to counsel for the bonding companies and asked them if it would be a problem with notification if in fact we were to hold this meeting outside of our geographic limits after the, the emergency declaration had expired. Counsel for the bond company indicated that they were unsure of the answer to that, but requested that we take these articles out of order so that we can decide them at a meeting that is outside the geographic limits prior to June 15th, just to be sure. Would you like to say anything further? You got a few more minutes. I no, Mr. Moderator. Okay. So you're going to speak uh, in 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 opposition or support? Yes, of, I am. Pardon? I am going to speak in opposition. Okay. Okay. My opposition is is that it, because of this article, you're saying you want to remove these two articles for the simple fact that we can't have our town meeting here if we extend our town meeting. Well, if, the, if, if it's lifted after the 15th, which is in, what, five days, there isn't any reason why we can't hold the, the next session of our meeting at our elementary school in our town. So there's no reason to move them out of order. But the simple fact is, is that if we continue this from tonight, we can continue it in our own town at our elementary school because we can make a motion to do so. So there isn't any reason to take them out of order. So we should continue on with the process as we're going and not worry about whether or not we're out of district because we wouldn't have to be if we make a motion to continue this meeting at the elementary school in our own town. Okay. Would anybody like to uh, speak in support of the motion? 
Mr. Moderator, through you, I would just like to observe to the uh, members of the meeting that there is no guarantee that we will have access to the Brookfield Elementary School. All year it has been closed to outside meetings. I have not heard any indication that is changing soon. And so, there, and I believe they, that preparation work has been done to hold a continuation of this meeting, and I would like to not disrupt that. And so therefore, I think it's, it, I think it's very simple for us to take these articles out of order and move on with business. Thank you. Anybody like to speak in opposition to moving articles 31 uh, and 32 up uh, in the order? Mr. Moderator, I tried to address this with you earlier. Um, I looked at the information sheet under property under discussion. Uh, someone's asked for your name. Um, could you give us your name and address? Well, your street. <clears throat> by way of introduction, I'm a landlord of over 100 old year buildings. I have been for many years. I bought and sold them. <clears throat> One of the things that I know is. So, what your, what's your name? What is my name? Yeah. Kenneth Kimball. Kenneth what, Kimball. 110 Quaybog. Okay. <clears throat> my properties are in West Springfield. In fact, I'm a second generation elected town meeting member. Okay, of sir, if you could direct your comments to the... Okay. I do want to... Sir, what, sir, what, sir, what? before you go too much further, I want to make sure the motion that's before us is just simply to move Articles 31 and 32 up in the order and take them up now. Okay, so it, I, if you want to debate the question and you, you would like to support or oppose moving those two articles to here, please right. go move forward. Right, and I, I'm trying to address that directly okay. because I'm not sure you're moving far enough. <clears throat> Building inspectors like doctors, the one who graduates last in this class still gets a title doctor. So I'd like to know if the building has been inspected based sir, upon the information sir, sheet. Sir, I'm sorry, your comments are not in order at this time. We are not addressing either one of the motions associated with articles 31 and 32. We merely want to decide on whether or not we want to move, take these out of order. Okay. Uh, so if, if you're in support or in opposition to taking them out of order, please speak, but otherwise, please sit down and are, let's are move on. Are you proposing a time specific to take it up again? Yes, right now, if this motion is adopted, no, if it's no, not. No, I mean, I mean you're delaying it to a time specific? No. No, it's just We want to delayed. take it up right now. Ultimately, the point of the motion is to take up Articles 31 and 32 next. That's the point of the motion. Oh, you're voting to take it up next? Yes, that's correct. I'll say nothing. Good. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would speak to, uh, that wants to speak in opposition or support of the motion uh, to move Articles 31 and 32 up in, the, uh, up in the agenda so that we take them up right now? Hearing none. All those in favor of moving Articles 31 and 32 to take them up now, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. Uh, the motion is adopted. We are now going to take up Article 31. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Uh, I would like uh, to move that the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to purchase the parcel of land together with any buildings thereon, known as 18 Common Street, Brookfield, Mass., Described in a deed recorded by the Worcester South Registry of Deeds in Book 17,143, page 134, to be placed under the care, custody, management, and control of the Board of Selectmen and held for gener general municipal purposes upon such terms and conditions as deemed appropriate by the Board of Selectmen. And further, that the sum of $249,000 be appropriated for this purchase. And to meet this appropriation, the sum of $20,000 be transferred from free cash, and that the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow the sum of $220,000, pursuant to General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7.1, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes, therefore, and provide and provided further that any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount of authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. All right, I just need a clarification. Did you say $220,000? 
200, uh, to borrow the sum of $229,000. $229,000, thank you very much. Okay, there has been a motion uh, made. Uh, you all heard it read. Um, I, I, I'd like to avoid reading it again. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay, so everybody understands ultimately what this is. Uh, we're looking to buy the property over there on uh, 18 Common Street. Uh, and we want to uh, we want to buy it. Uh, well, I don't know. There it is. It's all laid out there. Anybody want to speak in favor of the motion? Um, Mr. Mo Mr. Moderator. Yes. Uh, just in favor. Um, that this is for those who don't know. This is the library, uh, and we have been paying um, a certain amount every year uh, for this. So this is to purchase that building rather than continuously pay on a building that we do not own. Okay. Uh, would anybody like to speak in opposition? Hold on, sir, because I think you, well, uh, do, would you like to speak in opposition? Yes. Okay, go for it. You have two minutes. I'll just reiterate, I am an owner of multiple over 100-year-old properties. In reading this information sheet, I see that this individual who owned this property donated land in 1884, but I, it doesn't tell me how old the house is, for one thing. It doesn't show the age of the house. Um, my other question is, it makes reference to friends of the library having donated money to do an inspection, but I am curious as to the results of that inspection. The reason I ask is I just sold a 100-year-old house in West Springfield. After it was inspected, I gave over $80,000 in concessions on the property. I'm looking at a value of this property that's 75,000 less than the appraised value. I mean, you know, we got a 150,000 year old house here. It would be good to know what we might be getting into. I say that because I sold a different house two months ago after I put a foundation in it, $130,000. It was a 100 year old house. That's all I have to say. Does anybody have a, uh, answers to his questions, how old the house is? Anybody know how old it is? What's that? Uh, Ma Mr. Moderator? Yeah. Shelby O'Day Hill, Lincoln Street Extension. Yeah. It was built in 1840. 1840. So, here you go. All right. And as to the inspections, you had a question about inspections. Does anybody have any answers to that? I just want to address the question to you. Uh, the inspection was done, I think, two years ago now. There were, were, for the age of the home, there were no significant findings at the time. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody wish to speak in opposition? Uh, this, this is Washburn. You have two minutes. Okay. First off, uh, my understanding is, is that the second floor doesn't have any access to it for the public, so we're using the second floor for nothing um, or storage. My second thing is, is that I'm not sure if any of you are aware, but in today's society, libraries are becoming obsolete. It's called the internet. People aren't going to the library anymore. And this is a national study. Please, oh, hold on one moment, please. Please, respect for the person at the microphone, please. Thank you. Now, I did some research before this article actually came up. For the town of Brookfield, or the size of the town of Brookfield, to expend that kind of money on a property that we don't have ADA compliant, can't get it ADA compliant, and can't use the second floor of it at all, um, to spend that kind of money for it is, is um, kind of wasteful, especially in the fact of today's society where people just aren't going to the library. Um, I'm sure that the library budget has probably decreased substantially because the simple fact is they weren't really open during COVID. So I'm not sure what people were doing, but I think they were working from home and using the internet and um, not really looking for books. So because they have access through Mars where they can actually download the book right through a library, through the mass libraries. So, for us to spend this kind of money for a building that we're only using a portion of the building, we have no public access to it for the people in the town, um, why are we spending this kind of money? For storage? 
That's an awful lot of money to buy for storage when we can put up a metal building on another piece of property that we own for about one eighth of the cost. I mean, this again is like Mr. Cook was saying earlier, we're spending money that yeah, we really shouldn't be spending. We're spending money like... Okay, your time is up. Thank you. Uh, would anybody like to speak in support uh, of the motion? Yes, your name and uh, where do you live? Heather Regan, uh, Heather Regan, 6 Mockingbird Lane. Um, I guess I just wanted to speak to the fact that about li the library. I mean, I've had my kids use the library all through COVID. The, you know, they've, we've had pickup services. The librarians have been wonderful. My, my kids, elementary school age, has had stacks of books you as tall, the sorry, to me. Sorry, okay. as tall as them. So the library isn't obsolete. It promotes reading with our, in our young children. And the, the library has, has all along been uh, amazing trying to get books to people. And they are constantly updating their, their um, stuff. In addition, the building next door, I run a Girl Scout troop. For years, we've been using that space um, to, to go to, it's, oh, it is open for people to use in meetings. I know the Cub Scouts have used it. I know there's other organizations that use it. So it is a public space that people are able to use. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody else want to speak in opposition to the, uh, to the motion? Sir. Well, I've been standing here from the beginning. I'm sorry. Because I was going to make the five minute statement for it. You got, two, you got two minutes, sorry. So now I got two minutes. All right. I'll make a couple of statements. Uh, first, I support this article because it provides the most cost-effective way to deal with the long-standing issue of needed space for the American Public Library and the Brookfield Historical Commission. The library sits on the same footprint that it did in 1884, and it remains essentially unchanged. Could you speak a little closer to the microphone? Thanks. The most obvious? Yes, that's good. Okay. The most obvious change occurred in 1898 when the trustees voted to add a gallery over the main reading room. The most obvious change outside the library was the addition of an entrance ramp on Lincoln Street. The fundamental structure of the building remains strong. 20 years ago, the library trustees attempted to address this need for additional space. Uh, there were four alternatives developed at the time. One was um, an addition parallel to Lincoln Street. The second was an addition situated maybe on the northeast section of the building. Both of those required uh, purchasing land to make the additions work. The third proposal um, was to build another library at some other site. And the fourth proposal was to take the um, addition that was parallel to Lincoln Street and not buy any land, but to put the septic system on the town common, on the south end of the common. None of those um, proposals moved forward. The current plan is to buy an adjacent piece of property and use the building that's already on there to provide the additional needed space. Um, the plan is to move um, the historical collection, if I could use that term, from the library to you the need to wrap it up. What's that? You need to wrap it up. Your two minutes is up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, All right. Uh, Randy, would you like to speak to the motion? John Washburn, 12 Main Street. Okay. Um, I have a problem with the, the library we have now. It's, it's sufficient. It's a good building. Um, my, my question is, is the costs of this new building, uh, now it's going to be a cost of two buildings, not just one building, to upkeep the roofs and, and everything else around it, be it safe for people to come and go. Um, is there that much space that they can use there to really actually uh, be beneficial? to pay this cost we're putting out for a, for a whole house? Or is it, is it easy to just, just keep the libraries sufficient now? Do you want somebody to answer that question for you? Uh, yes, does anybody have an answer there to, his, to his question? I think there's a, there's a question of, is it 
is the space in, in, the, in this going to uh, be sufficient to, I don't know, uh, improve our activities? Shelby Hill, 4 Lincoln Street Extension. Is it okay if the library, she's not um, a, a town resident, but is it okay if we ask the librarian to come over to answer some of these questions? We included her at the beginning we of the meeting. We included her at the beginning. She, she can speak. So, okay. You want to come over? Yeah, Brenda? sure. Mr. Moderator, yes. just to clarify, so um, he state, he took the two minutes to, can anybody else that supports this article, can they also say a statement or no? Is there uh, any more time allotted for that? Every, for anybody can, yes, you have two minutes, and he can actually speak another two minutes after everyone else is okay. finished speaking. Okay, uh, so each individual that comes to a microphone has two minutes. Okay, thank you. Brenda Manville, I'm the library director. So our purpose here tonight is just purchase the property. It is below market value, we're saving money there. Uh, we're not asking the town for any operating costs. We have those in our library state aid account, which we've been paying for for the past three years. Um, I think part of the question is, I, I think your question was, is the additional space really worth what we're paying for? I think is is really, so it's a space issue. I think the question that's trying to be addressed here is, you know, how much space, is there enough, is, is it gonna be the additional space worth it? Yes, it is. Um, we, we've been receiving special collections and um, donated items since we started leasing it. And we have been repurposing our in, in library space to make more room for browsing for patrons. Um, contrary to some people's beliefs, you're not going to be obsolete anytime soon. Um, we, we provided curbside uh, delivery and in-library appointments for one family, one person at a time. Okay, so uh, his two minutes has actually expired. I'm not saying you can't speak anymore or somebody else asks you a question, that's fine. Uh, but his two minutes has actually expired. So. Uh, I've got to move on to anyone else that would like to debate, and there are people that appear to be, that want to debate. So, um, is there someone that supports the supports the motion to purchase the property for? And I, I gave you a lame uh, description of what this is. We're going to purchase the property for two hundred forty-nine thousand dollars. We're going to put up twenty thousand dollars, and the rest we're going to borrow two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars. I got that right. I got that right. Good. Okay. Go ahead. You're Excuse up. me, Mr. Moderator. We're putting up twenty-five thousand dollars and borrowing the rest. So, I'm hold on one second. The motion, uh, the motion was we're gonna pay $20,000 and we're gonna borrow $229,000. That was the motion. If you wanna make my, an amendment, go mistake. ahead and do so, but that's the motion. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my, my name's Bill Simpson. Um, I'm speaking in support of this article. I just wondering if I can give my two minutes to uh, Don Fagno. Yeah. Okay. Well, ask him a question. Uh, Don, could you tell me more of your statement? <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Pag, now. Thank you. Um, I thought from the current plan is to buy the property and use the house. All right. The type of material that's going to be transferred from the library to this house is what we might call the historical reference material. It would include the Bob Wilder collection, um, the vital records that they have, the, um, collection of Massachusetts soldiers and sailors of uh, the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, the large newspaper collection that they have, uh, the Joseph Craig collection of arrowheads and whatnot, uh, the Jeff Fisk collection of local history books that he's donated, and the material that's been associated with the Brookfield High School. Now, um, by transferring that material, it frees up space in the library for both safety and convenience. Uh, the large, heavy-bound newspapers that are on top of the bookshelves in the gallery were a hazard to pull down. Um, shelving under a, under a 
viewing table creates a safety environment for both uh, staff and patrons. The transfer of material will allow us to expand the collection of DVDs, added shelving for collections, and more materials for patrons. Um, storage of other items that was under the gallery stairs was a hazard, and they will be moved to create better access. Um, do we still have some time? They have 10 seconds. Now I'll wait and come back. You got 10 seconds. I support the argument. Anybody, anybody wish to speak in opposition? Okay. Uh, I got a question. In opposition. Well, I just have some questions financially for the town here if we're going to purchase this. And my first question is, are we going to get a Title V with this house that is going to support the use from people in the town using it? It's more like a municipality building. So are we going to, are we going to get a Title V with this when we purchase this? Or do we have to come up with money later? That's my first question. Okay, Number two. Other, let, let's just answer that one. Does anybody have an answer to that question? I do, but let him answer. I can remember that question. Let him keep okay. going. <laughs> no, Number two. Uh, where are we going to get the money to use the upstairs to uh, have it handicapped accessible? We cannot use the town hall, so that means we definitely cannot use this old house. Number three. What about the uh, accessibility for the handicapped getting into this house, uh, which is nothing there now that I know of? Um, and how about just the general maintenance of this house? Where is all this money going to come from? And, and the library director just said, well, we're just trying to get the house right now. Yeah, oh, it needs a new boiler. It needs this. It needs that. We're going to be talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can see it coming. So I want this questions answered tonight, if you could, for me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fagno, I think you had three questions. Title V, uh, use of the upstairs, and kind of ADA compliance type of things. Would you like to take a crack at it? You got a minute. I do. Uh, septic system is fully functional for what the use of the um, building will be. Um, accessibility. I, I, never got a, I haven't got a chance yet to explain how the building is going to be used, so it, maybe I should do that and try and clarify this. Um, the building will be used to store the materials that I just listed, and the Historical Commission is going to move all of this material there. The idea is to have a place where all the material, historical material for the town of Brookfield is centrally located. People can have access to the place physically if the library is open on a Thursday, let's say, and they have help and they can get in there. Or if a his historical commission member volunteers to do that. If they can't get in there, if physically they can't get in there, then the library, when it's open, will go to the building get the needed materials that you want that someone requested and bring them to the library. That is how we work and deal with the accessibility and access um, oh. issue. Okay. I think you're, I, your time's up at this point and somebody else is going to ask you a question, I'm sure, but uh, time is up. But I do think you answered answer the, the questions that were, that were, that were, that were up. So, uh, let's move on to, I think, uh, you're up next, so go ahead. My name is Tom Morse, I live in Niagara Drive Extension. I'm for the purchase of, of this can't hear you. You need to speak right into the microphone. I'm, my name is Tom Morse, I live in Maverick Drive Extension. I'm for the uh, project to purchase the building. I'm also on the Historical Commission and the Adena Project at the Tobin Campground. Uh, I know about you need to speak into the microphone. Just talk to me, look at me, and talk to me. Okay. That's the best. Um, I know about Mr. Fagno's proposals and, and what's, what we're going to do at the, the Historical Commission with the Heller House. Um, I support him and I support our Historical Commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, I need someone. Is there anybody that wants to speak in opposition? Um, 
we're going upstairs. I think we got a we got a gentleman down here that wants to speak. But Mr. Holcraft, you go ahead. Oh, actually, no. Well, no, you've spoken too, so I don't know where to go. You go first. Sorry. I'll be brief. I started this whole thing. I've toured this building. It's a wonder, wonderful and historic building, and I, I think it's lovely. My concern with that particular article was the price and the fact that there's no inspection information relevant to the building along with it, because we really don't know if we're buying a pig and a poke. I mean, is it going to fall down next week? It's just 180 years old. Um, my other question is, do we carry our own liability insurance? I mean, as Does I say, it, it would be a wonderful archive to own a historic building like that. But my concern is, if you start trying to make it a public building, you're going to have to comply with laws that you may not wish to comply with, because the numbers will be very large. And you can spend seventeen or $75,000 in a heartbeat. That's it. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to speak in, in, in the opposition? There we go. Mr. Holcraft, go right ahead. Um, I'm not saying I'm in uh, opposition. I'm just looking out for the taxpayers of our town here. Um, the Title Five answer was not answered. I want to know when we purchase this house by the town of Brookfield, are we going to have a Title Five in hand? Number two, if we do get one in hand, it probably won't be enough to handle what people are going to go in and out of there and, and use the facilities. Um, the ADA that Don just explained, he's going to have people carry people in and out. You cannot change the ADA laws. Either it's ADA accessible or it's not. You can't carry people up up the stairs and down the stairs and this, that, and the other. Well, you Mr. cannot Holcraft, do it. Mr. Holcraft, so I need you, my answer on the Mr. ADA is Mr. what Holcraft, I need. Mr. Holcraft, one moment. I just want to get some clarification because I don't think that the statement was that they were going to be carrying people in and out of the building. I think the statement that Mr. Fagno made was that if somebody needs some materials and cannot get access to the building, someone from the library will walk over and get the materials for the individual who can't get access to it and bring it back to the library. Is that correct, Mr. Fagno? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, Mr. Holdcraft, that's yeah. all. Okay, that was the second part of what he had said, but he did say about helping people in and out of the building. I was right here, I heard it. You know? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so I want an answer. How are we going to spend, how are we going to pay when we spend all this money to make this building ADA accessible? This is the time that we should have answers for the tax people and the taxpayers in this town. Like the gentleman said, are we getting a pig and a poke? These, you know, these are the questions and the answers I want to hear. All right, thank you. Uh, yes. Street. Mm -hmm. I am the grant writer for the town. I'm also the ADA coordinator for the town, so I can answer some of these questions. Um, Could no, you speak a little closer to the microphone? Sure. Um, it is not, I would say, ideal to help people in and out of the building. But the, the state law for small towns, with regards to ADA, and federal law also, we have to ensure accessibility or accommodation. Accommodation means that a staff person for the library say, could say, you wait right here, I'll go get what, we, what you need and I'll be right back. Um, we don't need to help people in and out of the building. However, there, are, um, there is a plan that the town had a whole ADA plan done a couple of years ago. There are ADA grant funds. We're just finishing up some accessibility projects for the town hall. There are ADA grant funds available However, the town needs to own the property before um, the accessibility um, can be done. So I've already been in com uh, conversations with Brenda, the director of the library, about applying if the town indeed purchased the, um, the building and so that we could begin to make accommodations according to the plan that's already been laid out. Um, and I support this article. Okay. Here. I, 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 uh, I just, has there, has there been a Title V done on this? Uh, he still has a little bit of time left, and I just want to make sure. Has there been a Title V inspection done on this property? Mr. Fagno, this is a yes or no. Title V inspection on the property, has there been one done? Can't 
Can you define exactly, and there's been instructions on but I, I guess the question is, can you define exactly what? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, has it, has has it, has it, has I'm sorry. It's a septic system. Title five. Uh, can, can you define exactly what type of inspections you want? Because we've had some things done, but I, I'm not quite title, sure what people are looking title, for. The question is Title V for the for the septic system. Title V. My, my. That was that was covered. In, covered. Yes, it was covered. It was covered in one of the inspections we had. I, I, I know it was. Okay. Title That's five. it. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Washburn. Thank you, Rob. Uh, my understanding from what one of the other um, residents said is that they're using that building um, to have Boy Scout and Girl Scout meetings in there. Um, so, so we're allowing the public to go in there and use this building um, without it being ADA compliant. Is our library itself ADA compliant? Uh, do we have wheelchair accessibility for our actual library um, at, at this time? Or does that also need to be ADA compliant and, and the bathrooms in the library? Are they using the bathrooms inside this building or are they having to go to the library itself to use the restrooms? Um, and we're buying this building and all I hear are the words storage and holding and storage and putting things in there. We're not displaying any of these beautiful items that we have from the historical commission because we won't have the ability to, to display them. So they're going to be sitting in boxes in this building and we can't come up with a better solution in our town to take these beautiful historical artifacts and actually do something with them so that we can display them and that we can actually have the kids see them and look at them and people coming into our town being able to do this, that we're just going to store them in this building. We did that once before. We stored them in the building that used to be on the police department property. So we moved them from there to the library and now we're going to buy another building to move it from the library to there. So this is not a solution. This is, you know, this is semantics. It's not a solution. When are we going to come up with a solution? Because $249,000 is an awful lot of money to use as a storage facility. Because we shouldn't have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts in there if it's not ADA compliant. If you can't use the bathrooms in there, if you can't get a wheelchair in there, or you can't get an ambulance in there, if there's a kid, that's hurt. You can't get an ambulance you're, you're, in there. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody want to speak in support uh, of the motion? Brent Parish, Town Farm Road. Just a quick question. As I understand it, we're leasing that building now and using it for these purposes now. The only thing this article doing is different is purchasing it instead of leasing it because it's fiscally more responsible. Is that, do I have that right? Is that correct? That's correct. All right, is there any further debate? Mr. Moderator, I would like to speak in favor when there's an opportunity. Uh, go ahead, I don't think you've spoken on this yet. All right, thank you. Um, I would like to point out my understanding is that as, the, as we are renting that building, ADA does not apply. When we own it, ADA will apply. And I have spoken to Ms. Metterville about this. We do have a plan to achieve ADA compliance for the first floor to allow that space to be used as an ADA compliant meeting room and for display of projects. Um, Brenda, if I'm misrepresenting something, please wave your hands and wave me off. But um, the intent of the second floor is for workspace, not merely storage. This is not going to be a storage building as some people on this meeting have asked or said. This is going to be a working or a living building with, as I said, displays on the first floor, meeting rooms on the first floor, working space for the library staff and the historical commission on the second floor. I had, with regards to achieving ADA compliance, uh, I agree with Mr. Holcraft, this is a concern. I have spoken to Brenda about this. 
the, as I understand it, the first thing that's going to happen when we purchase this property is a detailed study of what needs to be done, how much it's gonna cost, and the schedule for it will be done. And I will speak for myself here. If that, if it turns out we bought in a pig and a poke, then we sell it. If it turns out, based on plan, that we can get it ADA compliant, get it usable for a reasonable amount of money, maybe we can, Ms. LaRocca can get us a, a bunch of ADA grants and other stuff to make this thing usable with less of our money, well then, let's go for it. I think that if we buy it now, we are getting it at, three, at a three-year-old price. I, someone asked why are we getting it for such a low price over appraised, because the contract the contract price was set three years ago and the owners have honored that price for three continuing years. I would like to thank them for that. But fundamentally, if, we do, if this doesn't work out, we can sell it. And if it does work out, we're gonna have a great building for the town. I support this, thank you. Oh, your time is, oh, so perfect. We're just about out of time. <laughs> You, and, and you've actually gone to the right microphone, so speak right into that, get right up there so everybody can hear you. Michelle Taylor, Rice Corner Road. Um, I have the benefit of being not only a patron, but of having worked in the library, and now I'm on the Friends. Uh, something was brought up about an inspection. Somebody said something about two years ago. In my Friends role, I know that I wrote a check for somebody who inspected the house more recently than two years. I don't know the results, but I just wanted to get that out there. Um, as a patron, I have been going to the library for 10 to 12 years. I homeschool four children. I can tell you that just with my kids and myself in the library doing our research, the library was bursting at the seams. As somebody who has worked at the library and moved material from one shelf to another back and forth, should we keep this? Shouldn't we keep this? People coming in wanting things. Oh, we want to have this for our patrons. Oh, we don't have room because there's historical stuff up on top of the shelves and in the attic and under here and everywhere. Yes, that means that the house will be used for storage. It is also, uh, the question was brought up as far as things on display. There are a lot of historical things on display in the house already and any person at the library would be happy to take somebody into that building in order for them to see those things. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to uh, speak on the most? Mr. Fagnow. I'd like to use part of my time now to talk about why the Historical Commission is interested in, in being part of this outfit. Unlike the library, the Historical Commission was created in 1976, so we have a much shorter history. But well, we have a very interesting history. When we started, we were a meeting in the selectman's office and we were given some space to store our records underneath one of the shelves. That lasted a short while, then we moved to the library. Uh, the library gave us meeting space and it gave us some space to store materials. That didn't last forever either. Um, at that time, um, a couple of members of the commission were younger so they were trucking stuff up and down to the third floor in the town hall, and for those of you who know what the third floor is like, um, Historical Commission had this material stored in the uh, small offices that are outside what used to be the Masonic Hall. Uh, from there, uh, the library, the Historical Commission moved uh, to the basement in the town hall. Um, from there, it moved to um, Elm Hill Farm to move off-site because it could store all this material. When that um, property no longer became available, the Historical Commission moved to Prouty Street. There was a house there that the town owned at the time, and that's where we had material. Uh, that house could move, the property turned into the police station, and now the Historical Commission is on the second floor in the town hall in what used to be the coat room and the restroom. That's where our material is. This moving to a house would be a major improvement in our conditions. Um, in addition to the storage, it also gives us a convenient place to work, which we don't have at the moment in our conditions. And it gives us a complete, uh, convenient place to meet where we're right near our material so we can do something uh, when, when it 
uh, issue presents itself that we can talk about it. So that, for those reasons, the Historical Commission is interested in this. And again, it supports the idea as the best cost-effective means to address space issues that are plaguing both the library Mr. and Bagner, the Historical your time Commission. Is, your time is up. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, just hold on one second. Uh, is there anybody else that wants to discuss uh, uh, the motion? Um, Mr. Holcraft, you've kind of taken two bites of the apple already, so I think you're done. I do my best at it. Can I ask one more question? Uh, no, you may not, because you've already been there twice. Questions count. No. Um, no. Is there anybody else who would like to speak to the motion? I'm a voter. Did I ever get an answer to my question? I think there has been several answers, that there has been several inspections, uh, if that's the question that you're speaking about. And, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. You you two have spoken twice on the question. Uh, so is there anybody I got a else point of order. Me? Point of order. I asked several times. Do, do we do we have a certificate of Title V, and are we going to get one? Yes or no, sir. Before that is we not buy Mr. the property, Mr. Holcraft, that is Thank not you. a point of order. You're uh, out of order. Is there anybody? Further, that would like to debate the question. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to authorize the Board of Selectmen to purchase the parcel of land together with any buildings thereon, known at 18 Common Street, Brookfield, Massachusetts, described in a deed recorded at the Worcester South Registry of Deeds in Book 1000. 700, uh, 17,143, page 134, to be placed under the care, custody, management, and control of the Board of Selectment and held for general municipal purposes upon such terms and conditions as deemed appropriate by the Board of Selectment, and further, that the sum of $249,000 be appropriated for this purchase and to meet the appropriation, the sum of $20,000 be transferred from free cash and that the treasurer, be, with approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow the sum of $229,000 pursuant to General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, 7 uh, 1, or any other enabling authority to issue bonds or notes thereof, and provided further that any premium received upon the sale of any uh, bonds or notes approved by this vote, less that less any such premium applied to the payment to the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount of authorized to borrow uh, to bar, uh, see, to be borrowed to pay such costs like uh, by a like amount. Uh, so all those in favor of approaching this place for $249,000, uh, putting up $20,000 out of free cash and borrowing $229,000, we need a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Uh, please hold up your cards. Yes. Okay. Uh, town Council has suggested that we, uh, that we count this, so... Uh, where are my tellers? Uh, okay, all those in favor, please hold your cards up. Don't forget the people up in the balcony and the people up here. Fifty-five. Oh, 55. 39. 39. Okay, put your cards down. All those opposed, uh, please raise your cards to be counted. Three. The vote is 94 uh, to 3. Uh, the ayes have it. It's more than a two-thirds vote. The motion is adopted. We're buying 18 Common Street. All right. 
Uh, article number 32. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town appropriate the sum of $590,000 to purchase and equip a pumper truck for the fire department. And to meet this appropriation, the sum of $95,000 be transferred from free cash and that the treasurer with approval of the board of selectmen is authorized to borrow the sum of $495,000 pursuant to general law, chapter 44, section seven, or any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes therefore, and provided, uh, and provided further that any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with general law chapter 44 section 20 thereby reducing the amount of authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount the motion has been made to purchase uh, and equip a, a pumper truck for the fire department and the amount of five hundred ninety thousand dollars uh, and to transfer ninety five thousand dollars in free cost for free cash and borrow four hundred ninety five thousand dollars uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. Uh, there's a second to the motion. Uh, sir, would you like to, uh, would you, would it, would, it, would it be better for the fire department to speak to this? Uh, is, is someone from the fire department here to, to, to speak in favor of this motion? You have five minutes. I prefer to answer questions, but I'll just go off script here. We're looking to replace a truck in 1989, which we bought used 21 years ago. We didn't expect it the last 21 years. Neither did the truck. Our failures bills uh, back that out. The truck, when it was built in 89, it was not built. It's called a canopy cab truck. It does not have a full roof. Three firefighters sitting in the back are not they're not protected by a roof, they're not protected by airbags, they're not protected by shoulder belts, they're protected by three safe belts and gravity. Um, the truck itself, it's a metal tank, it's an old pump. We've had failures on it where, in one case, one part was no longer available, so they had to take that part out and fabricate new parts just to get the truck to work again. So we're not really talking about a truck that we just can keep putting money into and into and into. Um, that cost, I don't like the cost either. I'm sorry, that's what they cost. But that's, that's without a question, that's the best. Good? Okay, okay. that's fine. Yep, good. Uh, anybody want to speak in opposition to the motion? Uh, anybody else want to speak in support of the motion? Okay, this is a uh, this is a borrowing uh, this is a borrowing article. Uh, we need a two thirds vote. Uh, all those in favor of buying a uh, buying the fire department and equipping a pumper truck for five hundred ninety thousand uh, dollars using ninety five thousand dollars out of free cash and borrowing the other four hundred ninety five thousand dollars, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. It is unanimous. Uh, fire Chief, you have your fire truck. Uh, Article 19. Mr. Moderator. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. You know, you got it. I move that the town transfer from free cash $7,500 to fund the center line painting town roads. Uh, the motion is to transfer 7500 bucks from the uh, from free cash for center line painting and town roads. Is there a second? I got a second. Is there anybody that wants to discuss the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of spending 7500 bucks out of free cash for line painting say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. I like this kind of action. Uh, Article 20. Mr. Moderator, yes. I move that the town transfer from free cash $35,000 to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. 
A motion has been made to spend $35,000 out of free cash to fund road construction and reconstruction account. Is there a second? Second. Is there anybody that wishes to discuss this particular motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of spending $35,000 out of free cash to fund road construction and reconstruction account, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 21. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $18,000 to add drainage infrastructure on private property and build drainage retention area on Rice Corner Road and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire any necessary drainage easements and to execute said documents as may be necessary to carry out the purposes of this article. Motion has been made uh, to transfer $18,000 from free cash to add drainage, infra drainage infrastructure on private property and build a drainage retention area on Rice Corner Road and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire any necessary drainage easements uh, and to execute such documents as may be necessary to carry out the purposes of this article. Is there a second? There is a second. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. Mr. Holcraft. Uh, could you explain to us why the town is going to be paying for drainage on private property? And what's involved in this, this whole thing? Yeah, and Mr. Holcraft, just uh, for your awareness, and I want to speak to the article first, is that initially the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Committee had supported it um, with the... Could you hold it really close? On yep. the okay, sorry, my apologies. Great. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, very good. Right. Great. So initially we were supporting this article, uh, but it was contingent on the on, on what we thought we had the ability to um, to impose a betterment or a, a lien on the property associated with the drainage portion of the project, where the road portion would be covered by the town at, as a suitable, um, and that the that the, any of the drainage improvement work would be. Uh, that burden would actually be on the properties that were receiving the benefit. Um, it's that's not. We currently don't have the bylaw to execute the project in that manner. So, but given that we had um, published this on the warrant rather than uh, moving past the article, we wanted to at least put it before the town meeting and, and allow the discussion around uh, this particular issue. Um, at, at this time, the Board of Selectmen, prior to this meeting, had voted not to support the article, uh, but it is still before town meeting. Um, you just said a whole bunch of stuff there, but you haven't told me what is really taking place on this property. I, I mean, you, you okay, just... Okay, so, so what's going... The, the work that would be done under the $18,000 includes uh, repair to the road surface. It includes pipe being put in to redirect the water uh, kind of parallel to the road, and it would include uh, a rip rack kind of not so much, it's not not to the extent of being a, a, uh, a uh, retention pond, but, but more like rip rack to slow down the water as it goes downhill um, away from the property where it's currently flowing. All right, you got five seconds. Five seconds? Yeah. Um, I'd just like to know why we are uh, spending money on private property. I got some drainage pro problems on my property. You going to come over and do mine too? Yeah, that's it. Uh, give it. Wait a little bit and you'll get another crack bite of the apple. Clarence Snyder, Gay Road. Uh, we've been trying to work with these neighbors for over three years to try to solve a situation where mass uh, wildlife has a property that is all a hillside. The water off that hillside drains down to the road, then through the road, the road's undermined today. You can ride up there today and you see a hole in the road. That's because the property of the mass wildlife is draining down and through the road. And then where the next stop is three house lots that were built. Not the developer's fault that, that they built three houses, understanding that this has probably been a couple hundred years of drainage into this area. So it's the highway superintendent did a lot of work to try to figure out what the best solution would be as to whether you uh, pipe, it, pipe the water away or whatever. What's suggested now is to slow the water down as Beth has suggested, such that we have a riprap or a retention pond of sorts on the Mass Wildlife property. Mass Wildlife gives the town $90,000 approximately, now that I get that right, a year for 
Massawala in lieu of taxes. So we're getting $90,000 from the state on a yearly basis. Uh, what, what this would do is this would siphon off the $18,000 to make the, make the corrections to see if we can stop ha having the water flow into these three house lots. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Sir. Opposition. Your name? Uh, Bruce Clark, Rice Corner Road. Thank you, Bruce. I actually know this property very well. I was the one who did the landscaping behind two of these three houses involved. It was wet when we got there. It'll be wet tomorrow. Water runs downhill in Brookfield. If anybody knows the property, everything leading to the properties are higher. The property owners themselves paved their driveways, put roofs on their houses, put raised septic systems in. The water ends up in the low spot of the properties. It does dry up in the summertime when seasons dry up. My field's wet in the time of year when this property's wet. I'm opposed to the project. Uh, is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Does the sports like this? The Board of Selectmen does not support it. Is this Article 21 that says they support it? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, it probably wasn't clear because I wasn't speaking into the mic. Is that initially when we when we support voted to support it? Per, the, per what's reflected in the warrant book, we thought that there was a, a means for us to do some cost sharing with the property owners, where the, where the road portion, yeah, there you go, where the road portion would be covered by the town, the retention pond riprack would be covered by the town, but that, the, that through a, a betterment that the property owners would be, in essence, paying the town back for any of the work that was done on the private property. We don't have that mechanism because we don't have the bylaw to do it. So, so they, they supported it before they were opposed to it. So the sponsor the and the, and the, okay, so anyway. Point of order, who's sponsoring the article? Uh, who's, who's the sponsor of the article? Is the, and that's not really a point of order. That's more of a question, sir. Uh, point of order is are we doing something wrong? And, and you're asking a question. So if you want to debate or come on up to the microphone, we'd be happy to sort of address this in a timely I'm just, fashion. I'm just asking if, it, if they're sponsoring the Are you sponsoring the article? Who's sponsoring the article? Anybody know? Advisory time. committee. So, is, so at the time that the at the time that the uh, book was printed. Just, are you sponsoring the article? No. No. Uh, so I don't know who is. Uh, I sorry, can't help you. Uh, you can speak if, in opposition or support of it. That's fine. To file the article. Okay. Sounds like the selectmen did, but then they changed their mind. But they decided to continue to move forward with it. Uh, so up here. Hi, I'm Shelly Hill, again, for Lincoln Street Extension. Um, I'm, I am in support of this article. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Um, if we don't do this, and maybe nobody can answer this here, but if we do not do this, isn't the road going to erode and the town is going to be paying more to get it fixed? if this does not get done. Because I, I don't know about any of you, but I've been down there when this has happened. And my thinking is, is that eventually, it's going to erode underneath and it's gonna cost us, the town, more in the long run. If, if we don't fix it now, it's going to cost, possibly cost the town additional funds down the road. Does anybody have an answer to the question? <coughs> Ryan Pompey on the highway superintendent. Uh, the road could be fixed out of the normal operating budget of the highway department. Okay, so if it gets washed out, you guys are going to be responsible for fixing it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else want to speak to the motion? Mr. Holcraft. Yeah, Joe. Who supported this article? Who put this on the want to be put on tonight? I'm just kind of, I, I, no one will, I can't hear an answer from anybody. So Mr. Holcraft, the answer has actually been answered, or the question has been answered. Uh, it was originally uh, the Board of Selectmen, they no longer support it, uh, and that's the answer to the question. All right, that's fine, okay, I'll accept that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. You're welcome, Mr. Holcraft. Any, any further discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, the motion is 
to spend $18,000 out of free cash to add drainage infrastructure on private property and build drainage retention area on Royce Corner Road and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire any necessary drainage easements and to execute such documents as may be necessary to carry out the purposes of this article. Uh, all those in favor of this uh, motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the no's have it. The motion fails. Uh, Article 22. Mr. Moderator? Uh, yes. Yeah. Point of order? Yeah. I, I would like your opinion. I would like to take the amount of money in Article 21 and I would like to increase it by 18, this $18,000. How should I make that happen? I'm sorry. What say? Answer that again? Uh, I would like to increase the amount of money that we allocated in Article 20 from $35,000 to $53,000, effectively taking this $18,000 we would have spent on this project and putting it into road reconstruction so that the highway superintendent, uh, well, I'll explain it later, but that's what I want to do. Well, we'd have to, uh, you'd have to make a motion to reconsider uh, Article 20. We'd have to make a decision on that. Uh, and if the motion is, is successful, then we can uh, then we can readdress that the way that you would like. So the, the proper procedure would be for you to make a motion to reconsider uh, Article 20. Uh, go ahead. I would like to make a motion to reconsider Article 20. Uh, is there a second to reconsider uh, Article 20? Uh, there's a second. Uh, okay, one moment. Let me just. Uh, Reset my timer here. I think. Oh, yeah. I think you got this thing. Okay, hold on one second. Just want to make sure that I write this down. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, one moment. Okay, um, we were just having a little bit of discussion. Town Council was a little concerned. Uh, the motion uh, has been made uh, to reconsider Article 20. Uh, I will allow debate, but it's only on whether or not to reconsider. It's nothing. There, there will be no debate whatsoever on the amount or whether this is necessary or not. It's simply should we reconsider it. Um, It actually does reach into the. It actually does reach into the. Does reach into the merits of the of the question. So go ahead. You got five minutes to defend your motion to reconsider. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm through you to the meeting. Um, given my understanding that we are that this project is not a high en is not a high enough priority for immediate attention by the highway department. My thought was that since we are not taking this project, that by allocating this money to the road reconstruction, we would enable our highway department to fix more of the higher priority issues on the town, in front of the town's roads, and therefore 
more quickly stabilize the roads and avoid future problems and allow us to address less urgent problems like this sooner. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to speak in opposition to the motion to reconsider? This is just to take it back up again so we can amend it. That's all, the, that's all this motion is. Do we want to uh, go revisit Article 20 uh, and the motion made therein uh, to, to, to change it a little bit? Uh, any further discussion on the motion to reconsider? Everybody understand what we're doing here? All right, all those in favor of reconsidering Article 20, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, say no. No. Uh, oh, jeepers. I'm going to need to count that. I, that was, that was, those were both weak on both the yes and the no. So uh, tellers, please. Uh, uh, all those in favor, raise your cards. I'm sorry, I get lost. Okay, uh, all those opposed to reconsidering, please raise your cards. reconsider uh, article 20 uh, so you have uh, what is your what is your motion mr. moderator I move that we modify the amount of article 20 from thirty five thousand dollars to fifty three thousand dollars an increase of eighteen thousand dollars all right so the motion he is making is uh, to amend uh, the main motion which was to transfer from free cash $35,000 to fund the road construction and reconstruction account uh, by striking $35,000 and inserting $53,000. Uh, is there a second to the a motion to amend? Is there a second? There's a second. All right. Uh, you have five minutes to speak to your motion. Thank you. Um, I think I covered most of it, but just saying again that given the volume of projects that we have and the, uh, the fact that the existing $35,000 doesn't allow us to address issues like this, my thought was that allocating, taking this free cash that we do have available and putting it in the road reconstruction account will allow the highway department to address other more urgent projects and therefore this project, while not being, a, I don't think we can address it with the $53,000, we'd be able to get to it sooner and that would be good in the long run because having water running across the road and washing it out, it's better if that doesn't happen. Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody wish to speak in opposition? Anybody else want to speak in support? Okay. Uh, the motion is uh, to strike 35000 and uh, insert 53000 to spend on the uh, fund, the road construction and reconstruction account. Uh, all those in favor uh, of the amendment say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Uh, I, I need a count. I'm sorry. I need a count. Uh, all those in favor, raise your cards. Okay, lower your cards, 18 and 24. All those opposed, raise your cards. Uh, the vote was 42 to 30. The motion is adopted uh, to amend. Uh, now we have to re-vote 
uh, the motion as it has been uh, amended. So, uh, all those in favor of uh, spending $53,000 to fund road construction and reconstruction account, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. We're spending $53,000 on the road construction and reconstruction account. All right. All right. So, uh, I think we're on uh, Article 22, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Good. I move that the town transfer from free patch $60,000 for the removal of hazardous trees in the town. Uh, motion has been made to spend $60,000 on a free cash for the removal of hazardous trees in town. Is there a second? There's a second. Uh, does anybody wish to speak uh, on the motion? We just have a really big backlog of trees that need to come down and we're in a fiscal position to actually take care of it before it becomes a, a larger general liability. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to speak on the question? Yes. Uh, Mr. Holcraft. Do we have a count on uh, approximate count of how many trees are bad right now? You know, we were, you were running a tally before, so I'm just wondering where we're at right now today, roughly. Do we, have, do we know how many trees? Between 250 and 300. 250 and 300, is that? Thank you. You're up. Your uh, name? Uh, Brad Kodelski, West Brookfield Road. So, if we appropriate 60,000, how much is that going to take care of, of the 250 to 300? Do we have an idea? He wants to know how many trees the $60,000 is going to take care of. Potentially 50%, maybe more. He said potentially 50% or more. This might fund multiple years also. It might fund multiple years. You want to say anything more? Can we get more? Oh, you, can you get uh, <laughs> You can make a motion to amend. It, it, it's actually difficult to support much more than that. That's one of the reasons why Ryan put the footnote in there that it might support multiple years because one of the ways that we get the most amount of trees for the dollar is to support the, the tree cutting companies as they're going through with some of our labor from the highway department. So incrementally it starts to get more and more expensive the more and more you're trying to do because we can support it less with the internal assets as well. Um, if, we could, if we can actually get the work done for that 60K, um, it'll get us a long way to getting healthy. All right. Uh, any further debate? All right. Uh, all those in favor of spending $60,000 out of free cash for the removal of hazardous trees in town say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. We're going to spend $60,000 on getting rid of hazardous trees. All right. Article uh, 23. Mr. Moderator, move that the town transfer from free cash $30,000 to replace municipal department computers and related equipment. A uh, motion has been made to spend $30,000 out of free cash to replace municipal department computers uh, and related equipment. Is there a second? Second. I hear a second. Uh, is there any debate on the motion to spend $30,000 to replace municipal department computers and related equipment? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of spending $30,000 to replace municipal department computers and related equipment, say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 24. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 40, from free cash $42,000 to replace the existing hot water boiler in the town hall. Okay, motion's been made to spend forty-two thousand bucks to replace the hot water, the, the hot water boiler in town hall. Is there a second? Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of spending forty-two thousand bucks to replace the existing hot water boiler in the town hall, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Yeah, I see. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article twenty-five. Uh, Mr. Broderick. Uh, I move that the town transfer from free cash $55,000 to complete the installation of snow cleats on the town hall. Motion has been made to spend $55,000 out of free cash uh, to complete the installation of snow cleats on the town hall. Is there a second of the motion? Second. 
There's a second. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor of spending $55,000 out of free cash to complete the installation of the snow cleats in the town hall, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 26. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the town create a, a council on aging director position to be added to the town's classification plan at a later date if warranted and to transfer from free cash $4,000 to fund this new position for FY22. Motion has been made to create a council on aging director position to be added to the town's classification plan at a later date if warranted and to transfer for free cash $4,000 to fund this new position for fiscal year uh, 2022. Is there a second? Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor on creating a council on an aging uh, director position to be added to the town's classification plan at a later date if warranted and to transfer for free cash 4000 bucks to fund this position for fiscal year 2022, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion has been adopted. Article 27. Uh, Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the town transfer from free cash $5,000 to purchase protective clothing for the fire department. Uh, motion has been made to spend $5,000 out of free cash to purchase protective clothing for the fire department. Is there a second? Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, all those in favor of spending $5,000 out of free cash to purchase protective clothing for the fire department, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion has been adopted. Article 28. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move the town transfer from free cash the sum of $6,500 to fund the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Revenue mandated recertification to be completed by the assessing department. A motion has been made uh, to spend $6,500 out of free cash to fund the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Revenue mandated recertification to be completed by the assessing department. Is there a second? second. There is a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, all those in favor of spending 6,500 bucks out of free cash uh, to fund the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Revenue, uh, mandated recertification to be completed by the assessing uh, department, say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion is adopted. Uh, Article 29. Uh, Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town transfer from free cash $25,000 to construct a shed at the transfer station. Motion has been made to spend $25,000 out of free cash to construct a shed at the transfer station. Is there a second? I hear a second. Is there any debate on the motion? All those in favor of spending $25,000 out of free cash to construct a shred at, uh, shed at the transfer station, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion is adopted. Article 30. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town transfer from free cash $55,000 to purchase a vehicle for the police department in order to maintain an adequate fleet of four cruisers. Motion has been made to spend $55,000 $55, out of free cash to purchase a vehicle for the police department in order to maintain uh, an adequate fleet of four cruisers. Is there a second? Uh, hearing a second, is there any debate on the motion? I have a question to the uh, chief, he's here. Chief of Police, go to question there. Um, what type of uh, cruiser are you? Uh, what what type of cruiser are you getting, and what company is uh, making it? Most likely, it's going to be a Ford, and it's going to be the Explorer. It's going to replace the same. It's going to replace the 2015 Ford Explorer. Okay, so we're not getting uh, we're getting away from the Chevy Tahoe. Well, for this I'm, year, yes, and it's it's due to supply. Um, there's a supply shortage out there, and we would be waiting a very, very long time for a Chevy. Okay, I think that's a good thing, don't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a question of whether or not we want to spend $55,000 not on what model we're going to buy, Mr. Holcraft. Yeah, I figured I'd throw it at him, you know? Fair enough, Mr. Holcraft, do you have any further debate? All right, thank you, thank you Chief. You're welcome, Dave. Uh, 
Uh, any other discussion? On, any other discussion on the motion? Oh my gosh! We're going to buy a Ford or a Chevy. Uh, okay, hearing none. All those in favor of spending fifty-five thousand dollars out of free cash uh, to purchase a vehicle for the police department in order to maintain an adequate fleet of Ford Cruisers, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Uh, which one are we on now? Article thirty. Uh, no, we did that one, right? I put. Third, yeah, right. Hang on one second. I just got to make my correction here. All right. Uh, Article 33. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $42,000 from the ambulance reserve account to fund the fiscal 2022 ambulance expense account. Motion's been made. I'm sorry. Did I... Oh, I'm sorry. Can I correct the motion? It's uh, I move that the town transfer $42,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2022 ambulance expense account. Okay. Uh, motion has been moved, has been made, transferred. Point of order. 42,000. I believe Ms. Coughlin has read Article 34. It's Article 33 in mind. All right, I'll wake up. The motion has been made uh, to transfer $42,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2022 ambulance expense account. Uh, is there a second? There's a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, all those in favor of transferring $42,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2022 ambulance expense account, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion has been adopted. Uh, Article 34. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $238,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2022 ambulance wages account. Motion has been made to transfer $238,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2022 uh, ambulance wages account. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there any uh, any further discussion on the on the motion? All right. The motion is uh, if you are in favor uh, of transferring $238,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2022 ambulance wages account, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion has been adopted. Uh, Article 35. Mr. Moderator, I withdraw the, the motion. All right. Uh, Article 36. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $16,695 to fund an updated master plan. Motion has been made to spend $16,695 out of free cash to fund an updated master plan. Is there a second? Uh, is there any discussion uh, on this particular motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of spending $16,695 out of free cash uh, to fund an updated master plan, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Uh, Article 37. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the town transfer from free cash $35,000 to fund the fleet repair and replace account. Motion has been made to spend $35,000 out of free cash to fund uh, or transfer uh, $35,000 of free cash to fund the uh, fleet repair and replacement and replace account. Uh, is there a second? Uh, there's a second. Is there any debate? All those in favor of transferring $35,000 from free cash to fund the fleet repair and replacement account, replace, replace account uh, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Article 38. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $700 to print the employees of Brookfield Policy Book. Motion has been made to transfer uh, from free cash $700 to print the Town of Brookfield Policy Book. Is there a second? Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? I got a question. Can, uh, any, can someone tell me what, uh, what we have in free cash before we started tonight? Just wait, just wait, it'll yeah. come up. It's there. Uh, Mr. Holdcraft, coming into the meeting, we had a certified free cash balance of $710,317. <clears throat> and the running total of 
the articles approved plus the remaining articles um, is 709,874 expended. And as articles are defeated, I will update that number. All right, thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor of transferring from free cash $700 to print the town of Brookfield policy book, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. Um, Article 39. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $42,000 for a walking path for the Lewis Field as printed in the warrant. Motion's been made to transfer from free cash $42,000 for a walking path to Lewis Field as printed in the warrant. Uh, is there any discussion or debate on the motion? I get a question. What's, what's this walking uh, trail entail? Is it paved, gravel, and where does it go, and, and so on and so forth? And where'd you come up with $42,000? I can answer that, Mr. Yeah. Moderator. Please. Mr. LaRocca, uh, 86 Craybox Street. Um, last year at the town meeting, the proposal came before the, um, the, the town to get permission to apply for a grant of which we would get 70% reimbursement for phase two of a Lewis Field uh, improvement plan that had been approved in the open space form by the town. Um, we received the grant and we applied for up to 140,000 70% of that is 98,000. It will be um, a walking track, walking, running, stroller track wide enough for, it, it'll be a, a standard width, uh, done by a construction company, and it will be um, gravel. And um, with some other improvements, exercise stations along the way, and it will be the combination of a quarter million dollar project. This $42,000 would be the only um, expense to the town. Everything else has been grant funded. So, and that still may be grant funded or private donations. So, but in order to accept this grant from the town, from the state for 100,000, we need to approve our 42,000 match. That answer your question, Mr. Olcrat? Yes, thank you. All right. Is there any further discussion uh, on the motion? All right, uh, all those in favor of transferring from free cash $42,000 for a walking path to Lewis Field as printed in the warrant, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. Uh, we are now on Article 40 and moving at a really good clip. Let's go. Mr. Moderator, I move yeah. that the town transfer from free cash 5000 to fund extensive employee accrual research not covered by the town treasurer's account. Motion has been made to transfer from free cash $5,000 to fund extensive, uh, extensive employee accrual research not covered by the treasurer contract. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of transferring free cash from free cash $5,000 to fund extensive employee accrual research not covered by the treasurer's, treasurer contract, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed say no. Uh, the motion is adopted. Article 41. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town transfer from free cash $9,000 to fund seasonal highway worker salaries for individuals with sufficient licensing to fill in for the highway department employees doing skilled tasks. Motion has been made to transfer free, from free cash $9,000 to fund seasonal highway worker salaries for individuals with sufficient licensing to fill in for highway department employees doing skilled tasks. Is there a second? second. There is a second. Is there any debate on the motion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of transferring from free cash $9,000 to fund seasonal highway worker salaries for individuals with sufficient licensing to fill in for highway department employees doing skilled tasks, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 42. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town authorize the tax collector to serve as the town collector pursuant to general law Chapter 41, Section 38A, such that the collector is authorized to collect any accounts due the town, with the exception of the collection of interest on investments of sinking or trust funds, with all the remedies provided for under General Law, Chapter 60, 
sections 35, 36, and 93 relative to the collection of taxes on personal estate and further to amend the Brookfield General Bylaws to replace, to replace references to tax collector with town collector in chapter five, sections three and five and elsewhere and authorize the town clerk to make those changes. Motion has been made to authorize, uh, let's see, uh, authorize the tax collector to serve as town collector pursuant to general law chapter 41, section 38A, such that the collector is authorized to collect any accounts due to town with the exception of the collection of interest on investments of sinking or trust funds with all the remedies provided for under general law chapter 60 sections 35 36 and 93 relative to the collection of taxes on personal estate and further to amend the brookfield general laws to replace reference to tax collector with town collector in chapter 5 section 3 sections 3 and 5 and elsewhere and authorize the town clerk to make uh, those changes. Is there a second to the motion? There's a second. Is there any discussion or debate on the motion? Hearing none, uh, I'm not going to read this again. All those in favor <laughs> of this motion, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 43. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town dedicate the former so called lakeside slash Tobin campground generally shown on Town of Brookfield's assessor map NP, uh, NP1-5D and as more particularly shown on a plan to be distributed at town meeting as a public park in perpetuity of the Town of Brookfield according to General Law Chapter 45, Section 3. Motion has been made uh, that the town dedicate the former so-called Lakeside Tobin Campground generally shown on Town of Brookfield Assessor's Map NP1-5D and as more particularly shown on a plan to be distributed at town meeting as a public park in perpetuity of the Town of Brookfield according to General Law Chapter 45, Section 3. Is there a second? Uh, is the maker of the motion want to uh, who's who's going to speak on this motion? In favor, uh, to, uh, are you going to speak on it? I was not going to speak on it. Uh, okay, but, who's, but who's our, our chairperson was going to speak on it? Okay. Okay. So the the fundamental purpose for us to designate this as a public park in perpetuity is in support of uh, grant writing opportunities that we have in order to preserve the land and, and keep it in a state that. Um, it is appropriate to the history that's attached to the Tobin campground. Okay, let me try that again, sorry. Uh, to to uh, set this up as a park in perpetuity uh, puts us in a position to approach uh, the state for grant monies in order to preserve the, the, the historical um, significance of this property. So in, in making it a part, it, it will set it aside um, for preservation uh, as part of the history of the town. Okay. Okay, Tom Morris. Um, the only thing I, I'm opposed to is be, it being called. Could you just step a little closer to the microphone and just speak into the mic? Yeah, thanks. The only thing I'm opposed to is it being called a park when it's actually a cemetery and the state historical commission and our own historical commission has uh, recognized that as a as a cemetery also and a part of the adena project and, and that's what i'm that's what i'm opposed to being called a park if it can be rewritten as the cemetery in perpetuity that would you know make it sound better in, in my point of view being uh, change that wording to cemeteries. So, uh, I mean, I, do, you, do you actually want to make that amendment? Yes. Okay, so what do you want to do? I, so it says- Change, change you know, the public is welcome in there still, but change the wording from park to cemetery. I'm so you want to strike we, the word park and, hold on one second. Just yeah. want to make sure if you want to make this motion, I, got, I need to know what it is and we need to move, I need to figure it out. Okay, so you want to strike the word park and yeah. put in the word 
cemetery. cemetery. Yeah, because that's okay, hold on, uh, hold on, let yeah. me just finish, okay? okay? Uh, so it's going to read uh, sort of in pertinent part, uh, and as more particularly shown on a plan dedicated uh, at, hold on a second here. Um, so, um, I don't think this is, I don't think this is naming it. A park. It's just a reference, yeah, right. I believe. Is that am I, am I correct, Town that's, Council? That's correct. It's, it's, a, a, it's a reference. It's, it's, a, so, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classification to qualify the property under that segment of Mass General Law. So, so the verbiage comes from the segment from that segment of Mass General Law, and it's by making the property eligible um, by defining it that way. It makes the the, the property eligible to pursue the monies to preserve it in its current state. So it's a, so the, well, the vocabulary is important with that because there's no mention of cemeteries in, in that particular section of Mass General Law, which is what would qualify it for future grant monies okay. to preserve. I, I, okay, I, I want to I want to stop. So the, the, My bad. Uh, any motion to amend what you're trying that motion to amend, I am not going to allow. To okay, follow. that's fine. Because uh, it's, it's not it's not it's. It's just not relevant. It's identifying a property as a reference, not naming the property as you know a public park. It's just a reference to something else. If it gets named something else in the future, perhaps uh, you might want to talk to the selectman or whomever else has got control of this thing, and, and perhaps sort of figure out a nice name for it. But other than that, uh, I think. Uh, in, a know. question in the same in the same thing. Somebody coming into town and see and sees this, right? And we we get it. Sit, my council sees, you know, we set it. We set this Adina Park up, okay, as you're saying, park. We set it up for ceremonial things and and have a walk around track and everything and set it up like that. People are going to get the wrong idea. Okay. You know, so this is a motion to sort of do this thing. Uh, naming it is not relevant to this particular motion. Okay. okay. I get. I understand what you're trying to talk about, but uh, unless you're going to sort of, well, your time is really up to be honest with you. So yeah, okay. uh, You know. So let's let's carry on. Is there any other discussion or debate on the motion? The question I have for the Board of Selectmen is, does the designation of this as a park and in any way impair our way to um, observe and respect the, um, the nature of the property, um, particularly to the um, um, Native American First Nation, I don't know what the right term is, but to the, the original inhabitants? That's what I'm asking because I'm Native American. I'm the, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm okay, the sir, sir, I'm sorry. So you asked the question of the Selectmen would the selectman please answer the question? I'm actually going to defer to Mr. Snyder. Mr. Snyder. The campground is already designated as a, as a national historic site. So the, I don't think, Tom, we need to. What this does is this, because of the language that it allows us, this allows Kathy to go after grant money. Yeah. It's really the, the idea of park is parked down into the verbiage. But this allows us some flexibility that we don't presently have as far as Grant, I know we went through this. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, is there any further debate on, on, on the motion? Uh, okay. And the motion is uh, that the town dedicate the former so called uh, Lakeside Tobin Campground, generally uh, shown on the town of Brookfield Assessments map, NP1 5D, uh, and is more particularly shown on a plan to be distributed at town meeting as a public park in perpetuity in the town of Brookfield. Excuse me. According to General Law, Chapter 45, Section 3, uh, this motion needs a two-thirds vote. Uh, so, all those in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Uh, I'm going to call this a vote of two-thirds. I only heard uh, like two against everybody else, so I'm going to call this adopted. Uh, Article 44. To moderate, I move, yes. that, I move that the town amend chapter 15 of the town of Brookfield general bylaws, the personnel bylaw as printed in the warrant. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, is there, is there a second of the motion to amend the bylaws? 
Okay, so uh, is there any, uh, is there any uh, explanation or debate uh, on this particular motion? Uh, would Linda Lincoln would, seems to want to speak. I, I'm on the uh, bylaw committee, uh, on the uh, personnel board. Work has not been done in the personnel bylaw in over 20 years. So what we did, we, um, we graded some positions and we, we went to the personnel bylaw, we d deleted some of them and uh, we numbered them, we numbered some of the sections. So that's what was done, just to update it. Okay, uh, is there any, uh, any further debate uh, on the motion uh, to amend the bylaws, uh, chapter 15 of the town uh, of Brookfield general bylaws, the personal bylaw is printed in the warrant. Is there any further discussion on that? Uh, okay, all those in uh, all those in favor of amending the bylaws uh, of the town of Brookfield general bylaws and per the personal bylaws as printed in the warrant say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article forty-five. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town delete the existing Chapter 5, Section 7 in the Town of Brookfield General Bylaws and replace it with a new Chapter 5, set, Section 7, as printed in the warrant. Uh, motion has been made uh, to delete Chapter 5, the current uh, Chapter 5, Section 7 of the Town of Brookfield General Bylaws and replace it with a new Chapter 5, Section 7. Uh, as printed in the warrant. Is there a second? There's a second. Uh, would somebody like to uh, speak to this uh, speak to this motion? Uh, fundamentally, the, the major changes in this is that it would go from $5,000 to $10,000 being what needs to be the amount for the capital plan, and that's an amount that hasn't changed since the, the CIDC was first formed. Uh, it does also open up uh, a little bit. It's a little bit less proscriptive in what members can be on uh, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. We've had a, a, some difficulties in keeping it staffed and by opening it up more to general members, uh, it, it increases our likelihood of being able to get and keep it warm. All right, uh, is there any further debate on, on the motion? Okay, all those in favor of Deleting the existing chapters five, section seven of the Town of Brookfield general bylaws and replace it with a new chapter five, section seven as printed in the warrant. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. All right, Article 46. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town accept the Town of Brookfield capital plan. Uh, for uh, fiscal year 2022 through 2026. So you just want to... Okay, that's fine. You don't need to explain that. So the motion is to accept uh, the Town of Brookfield uh, capital plan for uh, fiscal year 2022 through uh, 2026. Uh, is there a second to the motion? I hear a second. Is there any, uh, any debate on the motion? Okay, all those in favor of accepting uh, the Town of Brookfield Capital Plan for fiscal year 2020-2026, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. Uh, what are we on? We're on Article 47. Mr. Moderator, I move, I move that the town accept the provisions of general law, uh, Chapter 40, Section 8J, to establish a commission on disability and allow the Board of Selectmen to appoint a minimum of five members to serve on the board for three-year staggered terms. The motion has been made to accept the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 8J, to establish a commission on disability and allow the Board of Selectmen to appoint a minimum of five members to serve on the board, of, board for three years, for three-year staggered terms. Uh, is there a second? Uh, okay, is there any, any discussion on the, on the motion? All right, all those in favor of accepting uh, the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 8J, to establish a commission on disability and allow the Board of Selectmen to appoint a minimum of five members to serve on the board uh, for three year staggered terms, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 
The motion is adopted, Article 48. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $50,000 to OPEB Liability Trust Fund account. Motion has been made to transfer from free cash $50,000 to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account. Uh, is there a second? I hear a second is uh, multiple seconds. Is there any debate on the motion? All those in favor of transferring from free cash $50,000 to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion is adopted. Article 49. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $86,000 to the capital stabilization account. Motion has been made to transfer from free cash $86,000 to the capital stabilization account. Is there a second? Uh, is there any discussion or debate on the motion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of transferring from free cash $86,000 to the capital stabilization account, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 50. Oh. Mr. Moderator, yes. I will withdraw the motion. Uh, Article 51. Um, and the same thing on Article 51. I will withdraw the motion. All right. Uh, that is the end of our warrant. Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for your attention.